Millie and Molly will never forget their first day at school. Millie, time to get up! And how they almost didn't become friends. Will you miss me, Marmalade? Oh, don't be like that. I have to go to school. You know you can't come. Marmalade? Are you dressed yet, Millie? Coming, Mum! Look, Jemima's going to be here with you. Come on, Marmalade. Not very far away, Molly was having much the same conversation with her cat. Tomcat, will you miss me today? Tomcat? Dolly will be here to play with you. If you don't come to breakfast, Molly, you'll miss the school bus. And don't worry about Tomcat. It's surprising how a cat can fill its day. But Marmalade's going to be lonely. Just hurry up with your breakfast, Millie. You'll miss the school bus. Try not to miss me too much, Marmalade. Try not to miss me too much, Tomcat. <coughs> oh, Tomcat! <coughs> Marmalade! Tomcat! Here's your friend, Marmalade. That's Tomcat. He's my cat. How come he knows Marmalade? I don't know. Tomcat's come to see me off to school. <laughs> it's my first day. Marmalade too. I'm Millie. I'm Molly. Millie and Molly quickly found that they had different ideas about where the fun would lie at school. Mum says we're going to go on adventures to the zoo and see wild animals from Africa and... Well, I want to do paintings and maybe add leaves to my leaf collection. And... Well, I like adventures more. Anyone going to school? Me! Have a good day. We'll hear about everything. I will. You will. Bye-bye, Mum. Like, don't miss me too much. Don't worry, Tomcat. I'll be home straight after school. I'm sure they'll be waiting for you when you get home. Come on, you two. worry about Marmalade and Tomcat. It's surprising how a cat can fill its day. When they got to school that first day, Millie and Molly went in separate directions. Skippers. I can't. You can't skip. No, but I can do handstands. Oh. We don't want to do handstands. We want to skip. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to school. My name is Miss Blythe, and I'll be your teacher. We're going to have fun together, aren't we? Okay. Oh, I think we can do better than that, can't we? Yes, yes Miss Price. Much better. Now, let's find out about you lot. My name is Millie, and I like big adventures. One day, I'm going to live at the South Pole and have penguins as pets. My name is Jack. I play soccer, and I'm really, really good at it. You can beat everyone I ever play anywhere. My name is Molly. I like riddles. <laughs> Um, sometimes I have trouble making up my mind. But when I grow up, I'm going to be a princess. I'm Humphrey, and I think being a princess is silly. <laughs> Humphrey, be nice. Well, cause, cause I'm going to be an astronaut and beat all the dinosaur robots that come from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Of course it's not. I'm sure beating all the dinosaur robots from outer space will be a very important job. Mm-hmm. Who's next? Sophie? Right. Millie liked Humphrey. He was loud and funny, so she hoped she might get a desk next to him. But Millie was seated next to Princess Molly, who seemed so different. Molly was disappointed too. She'd rather have been next to Elizabeth, who liked to draw neat drawings. <gasps> <laughs> Miss Blythe! 
Humphrey, was that very nice? I was just, just, um, helping her draw better. <laughs> <laughs> Millie and Molly found that even their lunches were different. Millie never ate bananas like Molly did, and Molly didn't like apples the way Millie did. But after lunch, they were in for a big surprise. Now, may I see what everyone's been drawing? Oh, yes, lovely! Oh, what imagination! And what's this, Humphrey? It's a dinosaur from Mars blowing up a robot from the moon! <laughs> well, of course it is. And Elizabeth, I see that you've drawn... A rabbit! Oh, yes, of course. Very nice. And look, we have twins. Well, mine's a doll, Miss Blythe. Mine too. Well, I'm going to colour mine yellow. But yellow's my favourite colour. It's mine too. It's been mine... Even before I was born. Well, it's been mine since... Now, don't argue. There's time to draw something different if you like. Something that's special to you. Um... Well, do you each have a pet? <gasps> Mama! Millie and Molly had completely forgotten about their precious cats. I had a cat first. No, I did. Well, my cat is nicer than <gasps> yours. By the time Millie and Molly got back to the bus stop, they weren't even talking to each other. Mama! Tom Cat! Marmalade! Tom Cat! Marmalade! Tom Cat! Hello, darling. Here's school. Good. Where's Marmalade? Tom Cat! Don't know. Probably waiting at home. Well, let's go! Tom Cat! Molly! How was your first day? Have you got Tom Cat? I thought he'd be here to meet me. Tom Cat? No, sorry. Probably too busy. It's surprising how a cat can fill its day. seen Marmalade all day? All day? But Tomcat must have been missing me. He'll turn up. <laughs> but Tomcat didn't turn up. Tomcat! So a worried Molly Tom went Cat. back to where she last saw her precious Tomcat. Marmalade! And Millie had the same idea looking for her precious Marmalade. Oh, hello. Hello. Have you seen my Tomcat? He didn't come home. No. I'm still looking for Marmalade. Marmalade? 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 Where are Marmalade? you, Tom Cat? Maybe they're together. They seem to know each other. What if... What if they missed us so much that they tried to find the school and... and got lost? Lost? No! Um... Let's start looking to school. We'll find them that way. Are you sure? No. <laughs> Millie and Molly went through the park. Marmalade! Tom Cat! Marmalade! Tom Cat! I really miss you! Marmalade! Tom Cat! They went past the town swimming pool. Where are you? Please, Tom Cat, come back! Tom Cat! Marmalade! Marmalade! And they went all the way back to school. Tom Cat! Marmalade! They're not anywhere. I've got a bad feeling in my tummy. Me too. What if we never see them again? <gasps> uh... Let's go to the police station. Yeah, what if a robber took them? <gasps> the fastest way to the police station was back through the park. They ran as fast as they could. Look! Tom Cat. Do you think 
tongue tied for daddy? That means you and me are cousins, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Molly, will you help me find homes for the kittens? Well, if you teach me how to skip, only if you teach me how to do handstands. Okay, but you have to listen to all my riddles. Are they funny? Of course. All right. Why do cows wear belts? I don't know. Why? Because their horns don't work. <laughs> The next day, Millie and Molly caught the bus as the best of friends. They discovered that they might look different and even do some things differently, but inside they feel the same. school for the term, when Miss Blythe gave the class a surprise project to do over the holidays. I want each and every one of you to grow a vegetable over the holidays and bring it back to show the class. Oh, yes, yes, Millie? But I don't know how to grow vegetables. Yeah. That's the point. You'll have to find out, won't you? Yes, Molly. Can we do it with a friend? Of course. And you each have to grow a vegetable of your own. And no, what? Humphrey, I don't want to see robots, man-eating lizards, or dynamite. Just vegetables. <laughs> so Millie and Molly went to get some advice from the best vegetable grower in the whole town. You go first. No, you. Okay, I'll go first. I don't think she's at home. Let's ask someone else. But Aunt Maud knows more about growing vegetables than anyone. But... Well, can't we ask someone who isn't so... Hmm... Snippy? Crabby? Impatient? Hard to get along with? Yes, yeah, she is. But Aunt Maud's the best gardener in the whole town. If you want to know about books, I can help you. But Aunt Maud really is the one to ask. You won't find anyone else who knows as much about growing vegetables in the whole town. I can help you with pets. And lost property and road safety, but vegetables? You really need to ask Aunt Maud about growing vegetables because she's the best... In the whole town. Mm-hmm. So Millie and Molly ended up back at Aunt Maud's and found her in the magnificent garden at the back of her house. Fiddlesticks! You can't grow vegetables? Why, Aunt Maud? You have to be able to stick at it all the time. You have to love your little green friends and tend them and give them your all. <coughs> hmm. Even when you don't feel like it, you have to have tenacity. Mm. That's why I'm the best gardener in the whole town. I'm tenacious. We can be tenacious too. Tenacious, tenacious, tenacious. Well, I don't believe it. But we can, Aunt Maud. We can, really. Oh. <laughs> we'll see. Come back tomorrow. Aunt Maud really didn't expect Millie and Molly to come back. She didn't think they'd be tenacious enough to do even that. But Millie and Molly surprised even themselves when they turned up to spend the next day with Aunt Maud, ready to learn how to be tenacious vegetable gardeners. But they had another surprise waiting for them out in the garden. Ow! What? Fiddlesticks! Huh? I've hurt my wretched leg! Can't get up! We'll get you some help, Aunt Maud. I don't want any help. Huh? But I especially don't want any doctors. What kind of doctor are you? Six weeks? Fiddlesticks. You've broken your leg, Aunt Maud. It'll take that long to mend. Well, what am I going to do all that time? And who's going to look after my garden? We'll look after it, Aunt Maud. But you have to tell us what to do. You? Ah, you won't stick at it. Yes, we will. We came back today, didn't we? One day. I'm talking six weeks. <laughs> I'd try to find something to keep Aunt Maud busy. Without her gardening, she's going to be even more difficult to get along with. I heard that. I might have broken my leg, but my hearing still works. <laughs> Good luck. Well, what are you doing out there? The garden's not going to look after itself, you know. So, while Molly watered the garden exactly how Aunt Maud had told her, Millie tried to keep Aunt Maud busy with a story. 
I'm to your special friend, to all little guinea pigs. I don't like stories. I'm a doing person. I like to do. Find me something I can do. <laughs> the next day, Millie was told to dig in smelly manure to make the soil rich for planting more vegetables, while Molly tried to find something for Aunt Maud to do. Aha! Uh -huh. A jigsaw? It's something to do, Aunt Maud. I don't see the point of jigsaws. What do you do when you finish them? But they're fun while you're doing them. Oh, fiddlesticks. I don't like fun. I like to do things that have a purpose. Besides, anyone can do a jigsaw. Oof. Millie, that's not a weed. Molly, pull harder. Those weeds aren't going to jump out of the ground by themselves, you know. Uh, Millie, that's not a weed either. Uh, Don't think of having a rest till morning tea time. I never take a break till lunch, and that's why my garden is the best in the whole town. Millie and Molly definitely had to find something for Aunt Maud to do. She was becoming impossible. What's this? It's wool, Aunt Maud. I can see that. What am I supposed to do with it? We thought you might like to knit a winter blanket. <laughs> I can't knit. Don't like knitting. I like gardening. I'm good at it. The best in the whole town. But it's something to do until you can garden again, Aunt Maud. Knitting is very useful and lots of people can't do it. You might become the best knitter in the whole town. Hmm. Is knitting too hard, Aunt Maud? We'll find something else for you to do. Yeah, that's the trouble with you young people. You give up too easily. <laughs> So Aunt Maud started to knit. At first she was slow and made mistakes and a lot of fuss. Oh, fiddlesticks and fumble fingers! Over the next few weeks, Millie and Molly came each day and followed Aunt Maud's instructions on looking after the garden. Looks like we didn't give this one enough water. We'll make sure next time Aunt Maud won't be happy. But Aunt Maud had something else on her mind. At the end of the first week, Aunt Maud was still knitting, with less fuss. Fiddlesticks! And by the end of the month, she was knitting with no fuss at all. And the garden was looking as healthy as ever. Well, that's six weeks, Aunt Maud. Your leg's all better. About time. You can go back to your garden now. I'm not ready for the garden. Huh? Mm -hmm. When will you be ready? I don't know. Oh, why? Are you going to give up looking after my garden? Can't stick at it, eh? No, Aunt Maud. We'll mm -hmm. keep gardening. Uh. When will you stop needing blankets, Aunt Maud? When I'm ready. I heard that. Really? Yes, I will be the best knitter in the whole town. And while there was nothing wrong with Aunt Maud's hearing, Millie and Molly started to worry that something else was wrong with Aunt Maud when the whole house started to fill up with blankets. And Millie and Molly didn't know how to look after the garden when the winter snows came. So they called Dr Smiley again. What's the problem, Aunt Maud? Problem? What are you talking about? There's no problem. Well, if there's no problem, I'd better get back to the hospital. People are getting winter chills and need my help. See you later. So while Aunt Maud continued to knit blankets, Millie and Molly kept looking after the garden the best they could, in the worst of weather. Bless you. Oh, not again. So bad was the winter that the hospital was filling up with patients. And Dr Smiley had a problem, which had only one solution. Aunt Maud. What is it this time? I have a problem of epidemic proportions. I need more blankets. Well, I've made the best blankets in the whole town. Take them. Take them all. Just make sure those sick people appreciate my hard work. Thanks, Aunt Maud. Amazing, my garden's still thriving in this snow. No thanks to those girls. Couldn't they stick it out? Oh no, quite the opposite. They're in the hospital. They caught the winter chills too, tending your garden. Oh? 
even when it was cold and raining and even snowing. You don't say. Mm. Soon, everyone who was sick had a nice, warm, Aunt Maud, best in the whole town, hand-knitted blanket. And Aunt Maud knitted two very special blankets, one for Millie and one for Molly. Both had stripes and lots of yellow because Aunt Maud knew that Millie and Molly liked stripes and lots of yellow. Hmm. Aunt Maud. Now don't be taking your time. Make sure these two get the very best attention. Don't worry, Aunt Maud. The very best in the whole town. Hmm. And by the time school holidays had finished, Millie and Molly were well again. <laughs> well, I see everyone seems to have done very well with their vegetable growing over the holidays. Humphrey, what have you there? It's a potato monster. I grew it all by myself and it eats all the other vegetables. <laughs> hmm, very good, Humphrey. Um, Millie and Molly, where are your vegetables? Well, Miss Bly... Stop everything! Oh, Aunt Maud? Millie and Molly grew these healthy vegetables all by themselves. <gasps> wow. wow! And lots of others besides. I'll have no argument. These two are the most tenacious gardeners I have ever seen. Well, next to me, of course. I'm still the best gardener in the whole town. Oh, and well done, Millie and Molly. <laughs> and nobody had ever seen Aunt Maud smile before. <gasps> oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> Charlie? That's it, girls. Keep pulling. One Sunday, when Charlie was going to fly his hot air balloon, Millie and Molly offered to help him set up. Now, you two come back here, please, and I can start to inflate her. <laughs> That's the way, girls. Thanks for helping. <laughs> Millie, you hold up this, and Molly, you hold the other side open. Then I can get some air into the balloon. Charlie? Where did you get your nice strappy pants? We like stripes, especially if they have yellow in them. Made them from the old balloon! Did your old balloon wear out? No! Crashed it into a tree! Ripped it to bits! Nearly did myself a mischief! Huh? You girls thought about coming up with me? No, could we? Ask your parents! We could go up over the mountain! Be a big adventure! Over the mountain? Now look the other way! The flame's hot! Firing! Right, here we go! Cast off! Bye, Charlie! Have a good trip! Don't forget my offer now! Next Sunday, if you like! Wow! Think what you could see from up there! And... and what's over the mountain? Could be really, really exciting! Yeah, could be. Let's play on the swings. Okay. Millie started to think about the balloon and what exciting things there might be on the other side of the mountain. The balloon landed in the wild jungle on the other side of the mountain. And we saw lots of strange animals with big teeth that people had never seen before. And flowers with every colour in the rainbow. The end. Thank you, Millie. A very exciting story indeed. Now we're going to have a different sort of adventure. Dinosaurs from outer space! <laughs> oh, <laughs> much more exciting than that. We're going to have an adventure with... Spelling! Oh. Oh, no, but don't... Millie wasn't thinking about spelling. She couldn't think about anything except what adventures she'd have on the other side of the mountain. Millie, time to feed marmalade. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. The same as you do every night. I bet the people who live on the other side of the mountain don't have to feed their pets. Yes, but sadly you live on this side of the mountain, in a nice, warm, safe house with your mum and dad who love you and look after you. It's not very exciting. Lots of people would be very thankful for what you have. 
I suppose. Oh, did I tell you? Charlie said we can go up in the balloon. If you said it was all right. Please? Well, as long as Molly is allowed to go too. Yay! Hey, where are you going? I'm ringing Molly now. You can't ring her now. It's too late. Besides, you still haven't fed poor Marmalade. And you promised to tidy your room before you went to bed. Okay. Can't I do it tomorrow? People who live on this side of the mountain have to do it tonight. Mm-hmm. Here you are, Marmalade. Ah, oh, this is empty. So what do you think, Molly? I don't really want to go up in the balloon. But we'll see all sorts of things. Up over the mountain. Who knows what's over there? Can't we just play in the park? Maybe we could even get pants like Charlie. Don't you remember how he got them? He crashed his balloon. But it'll be an adventure. We could send Dolly and Jemima. Molly. I want to stay here. But that's boring. You didn't think it was boring before you saw Charlie fly the mountain. Please, Molly. I know you're scared. I'm not scared. But Mum and Dad won't let me go unless you come with me. You could find someone else. No, I want you. Why? Because you're my very best friend. The next Sunday, Molly tried to be as brave as she could be. Pretty girls! So yes, her Dad. very best friend Millie could have the adventure she oh, so oh, wanted. Looks like the wind's blowing the right way. Oh, Molly, isn't it exciting? Yeah. Could Tomcat come too? To keep Molly company. The more, the merrier. But then Marmalade would be lonely. Oh, then all right. They both can come. Yay! Soon the balloon was ready with everyone on board. Cast off! Firing! Charlie tells you to. Oh, Mummy. Good luck. See if you can see our house. Have fun. Bye, Billy. Bye. Do what you're told now. Look, Molly. I can see the school. And the night. Oh. And I can see my house. And your place. Up here. All the ordinary things suddenly don't look so ordinary from up here. Look at all the red roofs. And look at the river. It's so curly and blue and pretty. All the trees are in such straight rows. Everything looks like toys. <laughs> Thanks for coming with me, Molly. It doesn't seem so scary once you get up here. Nothing to be scared about. I've been flying these things for 30 years. I'm still here. Mountains coming up. How do we see what's on the other side? Not long, but I have to give the burners a big blast to make sure we get over all right. about that. I look for another wind going the direction we want. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. Uh. There, the other side of the mountain. Oh, is this it? Beautiful, ain't it? Um, I suppose, but... Well, the trees are pretty, and the rocks. Yeah, but I was expecting something more interesting. Even our town is more interesting and pretty than this. Charlie, Charlie, why are we going up so quickly? Just hang on now. What's happening? The wind's got us. Hang on very tightly now, and don't let go. Can we please go home now, Charlie? Please, Charlie, find another wind to take us back. 
We'll have to go higher. Higher? Yes, it's the only way to find a wind that takes us the other way back home. Hold on tight. should be going back to our side of the mountain now. When will we know for sure, Charlie? When we come down through the clouds and see the town below. Any minute now. Hey! There! Look! There's our side of the mountain! Hooray! Our troubles ain't over yet! What? I've only got a little bit of fuel for the burners. It's going to be a fast trip down. Not just yet. Have to leave it till the last moment. My tummy's turning inside out. I wish I was at my nice house with Mummy and Daddy. No, Tomcat, be brave. Charlie knows what he's doing. He's been flying the loop for 30 years. All right, I'm going to use the last of the fuel to slow us down. It'll still be a bumpy landing. Hold on. Is everyone all right? I... I think so. I'm all right, and so is Tomcat. Marmalade? Where's Marmalade? Maybe she jumped out when I wasn't looking. Marmalade! 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 Marmalade? <laughs> oh, poor Marmalade. You must have been so frightened. But Charlie's been playing these things for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, nearly had me another pair of pants today. So, going to come up with me again next week? Um, no thanks, Charlie. It was a big adventure, but we like our side of the mountain best. Don't we, Molly? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, time to feed Marmalade. I already have. Without being asked. Well, something is definitely wrong. Someone's been into Millie's room and tidied up everything. Dad, I did it. <gasps> <laughs> What's all this about? Nothing. But it wasn't nothing. It was very definitely something. Millie was very thankful for what she had. And very happy to play with Jemima and Dolly and her best friend Molly while other people went to find out what was on the other side of the mountain. Everyone in Millie and Molly's class was excited because Miss Blythe was bringing someone special to school. Here she comes! And why would we be so well behaved today? You weren't expecting me to bring my little friend, were you? Aww. Yes, Millie? You mean she didn't come? Did I say that? <gasps> Everyone meet Jock. Yay! Yay! Oh, shush, now you don't want to frighten him. <laughs> He'll never come out of his cage if he's frightened. Will you, Jock? Miss Blythe knows best! Miss Blythe knows best! <laughs> Miss Blythe knows best, and isn't that the truth, eh, Jock? Miss Blythe knows best! Miss Blythe knows best! <laughs> For the rest of the day, Millie and Molly and their classmates had fun with Miss Blythe's little friend. Say Molly. Miss Blythe! No, Molly. Say Molly. Miss Blythe! <laughs> Beetlejuice was filled with warmth and wonder. He felt special. The end. Did you like that story, Jock? It's the class favourite. Miss Blythe knows best! Miss Blythe knows best! <laughs> you see, Jock's very smart indeed. He wakes me up every morning at the same time. He keeps me company in the evening. And he knows lots of things. What do you know, Jock? But a few days later, Miss Blythe had some very sad news. But how did he 
die. Poor Jock. He was very old, you know. Been with me for years and... Oh, little fellow. I'll miss you. Everyone felt sad. But Miss Blythe was the saddest of all. So Millie and Molly decided they should try to do something to make their teacher feel better. Hmm. No. Molly looked for a present to cheer up Miss Blythe. No. Wow. No. But Molly just couldn't decide. Nothing seemed right. But Millie knew exactly what Miss Blythe needed to cheer her up. Okay, straight away, here's my pocket money. Put it with mine. Do you think it's enough? Oh, that'll be plenty. Just pick out the budgie you think Miss Blythe would like best. Oh, look at them all. Wow! <laughs> Oh, let's get this yellow one. Yellow is my favourite colour. But this is funny. Look at him, a headstand. And now a somersault. Watch him. <laughs> They're talking. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> He's a clown. Oh, you found the right ones there. The yellow one's Daffodil and the blue one's Billy Boy. <laughs> Look, Billy Boy's even teaching the other birds how to play soccer. <laughs> Looks like Daffodil enjoys her sports too. Which one are you going to take? It's too hard to choose. The yellow one's so pretty. But the blue one was the same colour as Jock was. So that decided it. The next day, Miss Blythe was going to get a new blue budgie to replace oh, poor Jock. Thank you. Millie and Molly were sure this would cheer up their teacher. But when they got back to Millie's house, Marmalade wasn't the only one to be disappointed. <laughs> What's wrong with him? I don't know. Come on, Billy boy. Stand on your head. Hmm. Show us how to play soccer, Billy boy. Billy boy! Billy boy! Fly! Fly around! Fly! 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 Like me! You can do it. Come on. Flap your wings. Come on. Hungry. This is yummy bed seat. Go on, eat, Billy boy. I don't think he likes the seed. My best lettuce. Your little bird will love it. Won't he? Yes, yes that Lord. Of course he will. But Billy boy wasn't interested in the lettuce. In fact, Billy Boy didn't seem to be interested in anything. I don't think we should tell Aunt Maud her letters didn't work. Me neither. Maybe Billy Boy thinks Marmalade's going to eat him. Shoo, Marmalade! Go away! Billy Boy isn't your dinner. Naughty Marmalade. Hmm, still nothing. Whatever Billy and Molly tried, Billy Boy just sat and blinked. <sighs> he never looked like standing on his head, or doing cartwheels, or playing soccer. We can't take him to Miss Blythe like this. The next day at school, poor Miss Blythe seemed sadder than ever. Can we have Beetlejuice again today, please, Miss Blythe? Sorry, people. I know Beetlejuice is your favourite, but I don't really feel up to reading the story today. Aww. Maybe
Maybe tomorrow. Off you go. You can go home early today. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Millie and Molly had to do something for poor Miss Blythe. So after school, they took Billy Boy to the vet. Well, I can't see anything wrong with him. Birds do try to hide if they're sick, but Billy Boy doesn't have anything wrong that I can find. But he used to do all sorts of tricks and was funny. We got him so he would cheer up Miss Blythe. Isn't there anything you can do? Well, we could try some vitamins, but you do seem to be giving him the right food and the best of care. How long do the vitamins are supposed to work? I don't know. Maybe Miss Blythe will start to cheer up by herself. But Miss Blythe didn't seem to be cheering up at all. Oh, Jock, where is that noisy voice of yours gone waking me up every morning? You scallywag. No. No. Millie and Molly needed to do something right away. So the two friends took Billy Boy back to the kind man at the pet shop to see if he could help. Well, that's strange indeed. The very same thing has happened to Daffodil. She hasn't been herself at all. No games, no squawking. I... huh? Look, he's doing a headstand. Well, will you look at that? He's sick. It must have been the vitamins. He's playing soccer again. And Daffodil's sick too. Take Billy Boy to his life. No, wait. I see what's happening. I don't think it was the vitamins that made Billy Boy better. Billy Boy has found Daffodil again. They were sad when they were separated. They're friends. You mean Billy Boy wasn't sick? No, they just missed each other. They need to be together. Perhaps you should choose another budgie for Miss Blythe. So Millie and Molly looked. And watched. And looked again. <gasps> Look! Till finally they saw a little blue budgie sitting all alone. Could we have that one please? Oh, I think that's a good choice. Looks like this little fellow needs a friend. Just like Miss Blythe. Oh, you're a noisy one. Oh, I'm cheeky too. <laughs> this is the most thoughtful present I've ever been given. Thank you both very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now would you look at that? He's learning some manners already. Thank you. A fast learner, just like Jock was. And while she never forgot her dear friend Jock, her new budgie gave Miss Blythe the fun and friendship she was missing. Well, who wants me to read the story Beetlejuice? Yeah. One day, Millie and Molly saw a new boy arriving at school. Welcome! I wonder who he is, what his name is. I hope he likes riddles. All wants to go on adventures. All like Jello. <laughs> I reckon he looks weird. Oh, Humphrey, he might be nice. You don't know. Okay, we'll I'm going to find out in a minute. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, everyone. <laughs> We have a new person joining our class. This is Alf. Well, say hello. Hello, Alf. Alf, would you like to say something? Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me in your class. He talks funny. <laughs> <laughs> he has an accent, Humphrey. And so do I. Do I talk funny, Humphrey? Hmm? No, Miss Blythe. Right. Alf comes from another country. That's why he has an accent. 
His own country isn't a safe place to live anymore. So he's making a new start right here. I hope you'll all make him feel welcome. Millie and Molly, will you look after Alf, please? Sure. Yes, Miss Blythe. Millie and Molly tried to make friends with Alf. Kick it here! But Alf was different somehow. Um, what was your old country like, Alf? Did it have jungles and wild animals? I don't want to talk about it. Oh. Who was that lady who brought you to school? That's my nan. I have a nanny too. Does she live in the caravan? Um, no. I live with Nan in our caravan. Oh, what about your mum and dad? I don't have a mum and dad. I just have Nan. It's your kick again, Humphrey. Hi, Alf. Forget your shoes, did ya? I don't have any shoes. What? Not any? No. <laughs> hey, Alf doesn't have any shoes. <laughs> <laughs> don't be mean. What? Whoa! Oh. <laughs> 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 Don't laugh at me! Want help? You! Leave me alone, you weirdo! Alf, would you like to come and visit at my house after school? You can meet Marmalade. Marmalade? My pet cat. I'll bring Tomcat. We can play with them. Okay. <laughs> But Alf didn't know how to play with cats. But I won't hurt you, pussycats. He never had a pet before. Don't worry, Alf. Mummy just doesn't like strangers. Tomcat neither. But next time, you should just stroke them. Patting hard is only for dogs. Sorry. Will they come back? Um, eventually. Everything Alf did was different, even the way he learned. He was good at spelling because he helped his nan do the crossword. Eight letter word, big building with lots of patients. Hospital, H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L. Good boy. We thought we'd never find you. Nothing to be frightened about, Tomcat. Pussy girls! And Alf was good at sums because he helped the butcher count out the change. Ten, twenty, and twenty is fifty. Thank you, Alf. Marmalade, Tomcat! Some people didn't like Alf just because he was different. You're not supposed to swim in your shorts. Where's your bathing suit? I don't have one. <laughs> no swimmers, weirdo! Humphrey, be nice. <laughs> Alf's on his own over there. I thought you two were trying to help Alf feel welcome, be his friends. We have been trying, Miss Blythe, but... He doesn't like riddles, and... I know he's a little different, but we're all different. You, Millie, you like adventure, and you'd rather paint Molly. But you're still friends, aren't you? Best friends. But we both like dolls and yellow and stripes. Perhaps there's something you both like that Alf might like too. Try? Well, just think about it. Now remember, everyone... Don't forget, tomorrow is come as you want to be day. Dress up and show everyone what you want to be when you grow up. All right? Yay! The next day, everyone was excited about come as you want to be day. Oh, a pirate. Arr. And you, Poppy, I see you want to be a business person. Well done. And Tom, a fireman. And Millie, let me guess, an adventurer? <laughs> and I'm going to be a famous artist. Very good. Stand back. Oh, who have we here, Humphrey? 
I'm not Humphrey. I'm Blue Man, superhero from outer space, come to save the world from destructo robots and man-eating dinosaurs. Can you please save the planet over there and let hmm. someone else in the door? Yeah! Here I come, everyone! <laughs> Look at Alf! get dressed up. Look at Alf! Alf? You know it's come as you want to be, dear, don't you? Yes. Well, you haven't dressed up as anything. What do you want to be? I just like being myself. <laughs> of course you do, Alf. Why can't you do anything normal? No one likes you, Alf. No one wants to be your friend. Humphrey, that's not a very nice thing to say at all. Well, it's what everyone thinks. No, it isn't. Alf's coming to my house again this afternoon with Molly. And we're going to have fun together, all three of us. Millie and Molly had decided they would try extra hard to be friends with Alf. Did you find your cuts? Oh, yes. But Mum Lady's having a holiday at my place with Top Cat. Oh, I like your cuts. We've got a surprise for you. Something we can all do together. We know you're good with sums and reading and spelling, so... We thought you could help us do some cooking. You can help us by reading the recipe and counting up all the things that should go in the bowl. And Millie and I can mix. No. Oh. oh. But we thought, I want to mix too. Okay. Good. <laughs> A cup of breadcrumbs and mix. Look, Mummy and Top Cat. Shh, pretend they're not here. <laughs> Did you have a good time? Yes. We're going to do it again this afternoon. Wonderful. Humphrey? Yes, Miss Blythe? Why are you wearing that beanie? It's not cold. I'm cold. What's going on, Humphrey? I... Uh, the blue from yesterday wouldn't wash out of my hair. Oh, it can't be that bad. Can we see? <laughs> no! Everyone will laugh! Humphrey! All that morning... Everyone Humphrey. looked for Humphrey. Hi. Humphrey, come on out! Humphrey! 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 Right. Humphrey. 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 Humphrey! 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 Go away! Why? You'll laugh at me. No, I won't. You will. I don't laugh at other people. Well, everyone else is going to think this is funny. I look stupid. Blue hair just makes you different. I don't want to be different. My nan says different makes you special instead of just the same as everyone else. Special? Nan says people only laugh because they're glad they're not the ones being laughed at. Your nan's a pretty smart person, Alf. I know. Humphrey, are you ready to come back into the class now? Well, only if Alf sits with me. So Humphrey sat next to his new best friend for the rest of the year. Yeah! And nobody cheered harder than Humphrey when Alf won that year's prize for being best all-rounder. Of course, Millie and Molly were pretty loud, too. We knew you were the best fella. Yeah! Alf finally smiled. But he never smiled so much as when his friends, Millie and Molly, showed him how to stroke cats without frightening them. I think those cats like you, Alf. 
<laughs> Neither Millie nor Molly liked swimming lessons. They were still learning, and Millie always got pool water up her nose. And Molly always drank lots of water. Accidentally, of course. Try not to drink all the pool water, Molly. Leave some for the other people to swim in. <coughs> you two just keep trying. You'll get there. Look at Miss Blythe. She keeps trying and she can't swim at all. Oh, can I have a bit of help, please? Oh, I don't seem to be able to get to the edge of the pool. Coming. <laughs> Come on, girls. Time to get out. lessons again tomorrow. But you need to learn to swim. It's fun. But Miss Black can't swim. Can't we wait till we're grown up like her, please? It's much harder to learn when you're older. But I get water up my nose. <sighs> Let's talk about it later. I'm going to push it up, up into the sky. <laughs> Not too high. <laughs> Taffy? Taffy Bogle? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Huh? Naughty dog. Now look what you've done. Dear, oh dear, my poor garden. <laughs> What's Taffy Bogle done now? Just look at my lovely geraniums. Oh, it's not really his fault. He doesn't get a walk often enough. Can't keep up with the young fella. He's got to work off his energy somehow. He loves a game. <clears throat> Can I throw the stick? Please? Is it all right? Of course. Taffy Bogle doesn't bite or anything, but it's good to ask before you play with a dog you don't know. Fetch! <coughs> ah! Pity this yard's so small. He really needs to get out. We could take Taffy Bogle for a walk, couldn't we, Molly? Uh, um... That's a very nice offer, Millie. But I'm not sure Molly likes Taffy Bogle. Come on, Molly. You throw the stick. He won't hurt you. Don't worry. Try. Mm-hmm. I'll try. Oh. Fetch! <laughs> See? He brought it back. <laughs> oh! Looks like you've made a friend there, Molly. See? His funny little tail is wagging. It means he likes you. <gasps> Good boy. Good boy. Okay, maybe you can take Taffy Bogle for a walk. Millie and Molly got permission from their parents, but Mr. Limpy still wanted to make sure that Taffy Bogle would behave for them on their walk. That'll do. Okay. Call him. Taffy Bogle. Taffy Bogle. Come on, boy. Come here, Taffy. Good boy. Even though Taffy Bogle came when he was called, Mr. Limpy was still a little worried. He'd never let his lovely dog out of his sight before, and Taffy Bogle was Mr. Limpy's only family. Be a good boy on your walk. Thanks, girls. Now he mustn't be late for dinner. He won't. And make sure you don't go near the river. Taffy Bogle can't swim. Neither can we. <laughs> Come on, Taffy Bogle. Good boy. We're going to have a nice walk, aren't we? Oh. Millie and Molly were surprised at how many telegraph poles. And fences. And letter boxes. Taffy Bogle left messages for other dogs to sniff. Millie and Molly decided that Taffy Bogle must have had a lot to say. <laughs> and Molly thought it was funny that when dogs did meet, they talked to each other by sniffing in strange places. But whenever Millie and Molly called... Come on, Taffy Bogle. Taffy Bogle came straight away. Taffy Bogle wouldn't come back. Taffy. And
And no matter how hard Millie and Molly ran, they couldn't keep up. Past the school. Past the swimming pool. Through the park. the river to where Taffy Bogle couldn't see marmalade anymore. There he is. Taffy Bogle. Good boy. Taffy Bogle. But just then, Taffy Bogle saw something else. It was his favourite toy, a stick. Look, he's playing that stick game again. We'll grab him when he brings it back. But remember what Mr Limpy said. Taffy Bogle can't swim. Hold on, Taffy Bogle. Poor Taffy Bogle. The river's current was very strong. Oh no! Taffy Bogle's going to be late for dinner. Taffy Bogle! Hold on! Paddle! Hold on the stick! Bush Bob was enjoying his fishing when he heard Millie and Molly call out. Bush Bob! Bush Bob! Hmm? Can you say? Bush Bob tried hard, but couldn't reach oh. Taffy Bogle. Oh no! Oh. Sorry, you'd better hurry. We can't reach him from up here. Miss Black, could you save Taffy Bogle? He can't swim and he mustn't be late for dinner. Oh dear. Sorry girls, but I can't swim either. You'll have to catch him further down the stream. Soon the water was wide and deep, and the ferryman was too busy dealing with some passengers to notice a little dog. But what difference would it make? I'm not sitting next to him. What makes you think I would want to sit next to you? But you like the same things. You both love... Mr. Ferryman, huh? help what? us! Can you save Taffy Bogle? He can't swim and he mustn't be late for dinner. But the ferry was only for crossing the river. It couldn't save Taffy Bogle. I'll get help. If only I had a phone. Here, here use, use my, my phone. phone. Hmm. But poor Taffy Bogle kept being swept by the river all the way out to sea. Oh, no! Billy and Molly were very upset and wondered what they'd say to Mr Limpy, who'd be waiting for his dog to come home for dinner. Taffy Bogle was all the family Mr. Limpy had. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a rescue helicopter! Has someone lost a dog that can't swim and mustn't be late for dinner? Yes! Ah! Oh, Taffy Bogle is in the sea! Will you rescue him? Can we help? The helicopter soon took off. But Taffy Bogle was only a little dog in a very big sea. He knew he would be all right. And he still had enough energy to wag his funny little tail. And he was still wagging his funny little tail when the helicopter winched him up. And he wagged his funny little tail especially hard when Millie and Molly nursed and stroked and dried him. But Millie and Molly still had to get Taffy Bogle home before he was late for dinner. They ran back through the park. Back past the swimming pool. Back past the school. But Mr. Limpy was already waiting. Could Millie and Molly get Taffy Bogle home before he was late for dinner? We're here! We're not late for dinner! Mm. I hope you've been a good boy. 
Taffy Bogle. But when Mr Limpy brought Taffy Bogle his dinner, Mr Limpy was in for a surprise. Well, well, you must have given Taffy Bogle a good walk. He's never been too tired to eat his dinner before. Looks like he won't be digging up my garden either. Can you give him another walk tomorrow? Yes, we'd like to. But it'll have to be after our swimming lessons. Oh yes, we have to go to our swimming lessons. We need to know how to swim. After your swimming lessons then, maybe Taffy Bogle should have some swimming lessons too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr Limpy, on tomorrow's walk, can we take Taffy Bogle on a lead? Well, of course. <laughs> Christmas wasn't far away, and all the people in Millie and Molly's class were very excited. Uh, Millie and Molly, I think there is enough yellow on the tree, don't you? Why don't you pick another colour? But yellow is my favourite. Mine too. Yes, but the Christmas tree's for the whole class. Why don't you pick some other colours? Something for everyone. Okay. What about red? I like red, but what about another colour too? Here's a blue one. We can make stripes. I like stripes. <laughs> Me too. With yellow and blue and red. <laughs> All right, everyone. As soon as you've finished decorating, I want each of you to tell us about what's happening for your Christmas. We're going to have a big lunch with all the family, which always takes too long. And then presents! I want to get a riddle book because riddles make me laugh. <laughs> Almost everything makes you laugh, Molly. <laughs> I want an adventure holiday to Antarctica and to visit gorillas in Africa. But most of all, I want to get a cooking book and make special muffins like Aunt Maud. Well, my nan hasn't got much money to have a big dinner or big presents. But she says she's going to make me something really, really special. You're a lucky boy, Alf, to have a nan who loves you so much. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get a giant dinosaur robot that can eat all the other dinosaur robots in the whole entire world. <laughs> oh, couldn't we think about nicer things at Christmas? Everyone's been talking about getting presents, but has anyone here been thinking about giving them? Anyone? Humphrey, what would you be giving your best friend to show how much you care about them? Um, well, I'd give him a giant dinosaur robot that can eat all the other dinosaur robots. And then I could play with <laughs> I don't think Humphrey quite gets the idea of giving yet. Do you? <laughs> but both Millie and Molly had the idea. They wanted to give each other a present, something they knew the other would like. Millie couldn't wait to get home. She knew exactly what to give Molly. Mummy, Mummy, Mummy! <laughs> How was school? Okay, I'm going to make a Christmas present for Molly. Can I have some of your wool, please? Wool? Well, I suppose so. What are you going to make? I'm going to make Molly an extra special scarf to go around her neck. Oh, really? I didn't know you could knit. Will you show me, please? And I need lots of colours because Molly loves stripes. But over at Molly's home, Molly was having trouble deciding what to give Millie. Well, what does Millie like? Things I like, Dad. Then give Millie something that you would like. I know, Dad, but I can't think of anything. It has to be special. Well, what about a riddle book? You want a riddle book for Christmas? Molly might like a riddle book for Christmas. A book! Good idea! But not a riddle book. I know exactly what book Millie wants. Can you take me to the bookshop, please, Dad? The Magic Muffin Cookery Book? Oh, I'm sorry, Molly, but we've sold the very last copy. Oh. But I brought my pocket money. Millie would really like it. Ever since Aunt Maud brought those muffins to school, that cookbook's been very popular. Uh, maybe Millie would like a different book. Hmm. Hmm. I know. Millie'd really like that riddle book. That's the one I want, too. Sorry, Molly, but I've just sold the last one of those, too. Hmm. Why don't you have a look around and see if you can find something else? It was Molly who was going to get the last copy of that riddle book for Christmas, but she wouldn't know that till Christmas morning. Find anything, Molly? There isn't anything else here that I know Millie would really like for Christmas. What am I going to get her now? You'll think of something. 
While Molly still had to think of a present for Millie, Millie's scarf for Molly was going well. Once her mum got it started. There. Now be careful. I will. And be patient. It'll take a bit of practice before your knitting comes out properly. <laughs> Millie's mum was right. It does take practice. First of all, the knitting fell off the needles. Mum! Then the square Millie was trying to knit turned into a triangle. Mum! Then Naughty Marmalade got all the knitting tangled up. While Millie was finding things tough going, Molly was finding it even tougher. So she went to visit Farmer Hegarty to see if she could find a present for Millie. What about a kitten? Everyone loves kittens, Molly. But Millie already has a cat. Well, what about another animal? <coughs> and I don't think she's got room for a goat. And Millie definitely doesn't have room for a ball. <laughs> <laughs> but despite her giggles, Molly was worried that she would never find a good present for her best friend. As Christmas came closer, the scarf Millie was knitting for Molly was finally starting to take shape. You've come a long way since yesterday, Millie. But the scarf's not long enough yet. I know. I won't watch television or go out to play. Molly's going to get the best scarf ever. But poor Molly still didn't have a present for Millie. Even at the toy shop, she couldn't see anything special enough for her friend. Look, Mum, look! There it is! The dinosaur robot! He can eat all the other dinosaur robots in the whole entire world! I want it! Can I have it for Christmas? Can I? Presents are for good boys, Humphrey, who do nice things for others. Nice things? What do you mean? How? Well, let's think. Is there someone who isn't as lucky as you? I don't know. Humphrey, I said think. Do you want that dinosaur or not? I'm thinking. Well, think harder. Molly was about to go home when she suddenly saw something in the shop across the road. It was just the idea that she was looking for. Mm. Something that she could make for Millie as a present. <laughs> Millie's going to love it! <laughs> Hello, Molly. Oh. How are you today? Hello, Elf Man. I'm good, thank you. I'm playing boats. I made one out of a butter tub. Do you want to play boats with me? Sorry, Elf, but I've got something very important to make. I haven't got time today. Okay. See you. Bye. Oh, my boat broke. Oh, no. Never mind, Alf. One day you get a better boat. One that never breaks. Hmm. As soon as Molly got home, she ran straight into the kitchen and began searching for the things she needed. Then Molly rummaged under her parents' bed for more things she needed. <laughs> and finally, Molly asked her mother to help her. You'll never guess what I'm going to give Millie for Christmas. <laughs> Nearly finished. Oh, it's a lovely scarf, Millie. Look at all those pretty stripes. Which colour is Molly's favourite? Oh no! I haven't put yellow anywhere in the scarf. That's my favourite colour. Well, Christmas Day isn't until tomorrow, so you've still got time to do something about it. Millie knitted way past her bedtime, trying to add yellow to the scarf she'd knitted for her friend Molly. And Molly stayed up late too, trying to finish the mysterious present for her friend Millie. Time was running out, because the next day was Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, Molly! Merry Christmas, Alf! Merry Christmas, Humphrey! Look at the big picnic Humphrey and his mum bought us! There's cake and lollies and bread and it's all really yummy! And it was my idea. And look at the boat I got for Christmas. It's made of ice cream sticks. And it floats better than any boat I've ever had. It'll never break. And my Nan made it for me all by herself and without any help. <laughs> Thanks, Nan. Merry Christmas, Al. And my dinosaur robot is going to sail across the ocean and eat all the other dinosaurs in the whole entire world. <laughs> Molly. 
please be having something to eat? No thanks, Elsnan. I haven't got time. I'm in a hurry to see Millie. I've got something special for her in my bag. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! How long now? Molly will be here soon enough, Millie. But I can't wait. I really want to see she likes my present. I hope she does. Oh, here she is! <laughs> Coming, Molly! Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a present for you. I made it all by myself, with a bit of help from my mom, and I wrapped it all by myself, with a bit of help from my dad. Here it is. I hope you like it. And here's a present for you. <laughs> I hope you like it too. <laughs> Open it. Yes, sir. No, I gave you mine first. Okay. I wonder what it is. <laughs> What's oh, funny? Don't you like it? <laughs> No, it's beautiful. I love the yellow bits on the end. Open your present. <laughs> ah. I don't believe it. <laughs> well, do you like your present? <laughs> <laughs> you made one just like the one I made. I'm never ever going to take this off. Me neither. Merry Christmas. What else did you get? Just what I always wanted. <laughs> so the two best friends spent the rest of the day together. Millie cooked Aunt Maud's special muffins from the recipe book her parents gave her for Christmas, while Molly read from her riddle book that her parents gave her for Christmas. Will you hear a riddle? Yes, please. <laughs> All the while, they never took off their scarves. Why did the cow cross the road? I don't know. Because he wanted to go to the movie. <laughs> Before school, Humphrey had plenty of energy. Roar! I'm a Martian from outer space, and I've come to take over the world. Roar! Come on, Molly. Let's be scared. <laughs> Roar! I'm coming, Earthlings. I've come to take you back to my planet and eat you. Roar! Careful now, Humphrey. What's the hurry? I'm just chasing Millie and Molly. Well, let's hope you have the same energy for class this morning. I will. And the whole forest was saved from the bulldozers. The end. Did you like that story? Can we yeah. have another one? Right. Oh, dear. The story seems to have put Humphrey to sleep. <laughs> Humphrey. Humphrey, wake up. I didn't do it. Well, you couldn't have, Humphrey. You were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not have your breakfast before school? <sighs> Don't like breakfast. Well, you'll need some tomorrow. All of you will. Because every morning for the next week or so, I'm going to pick someone to tell a story. And you'll need to have fed your imaginations with nourishing brain food breakfast. The best stories will get five stars. Mommy, mommy, mommy! I need some brain food for tomorrow because I'm going to tell a story about a big adventure in the jungle and wild animals and... Well, there's only one thing for it. The best brain food for the best story will be... Aunt Maud's muffins! You said yourself you can't decide what story to tell. Well, it will be something to do with the colour yellow. Or maybe a princess. So you'll need something very nourishing to feed your imagination. I know Aunt Maud can be snippy, but she does make the most nutritious, best-tasting, brain-feeding muffins in town. So Millie and Molly went to see Aunt Maud about her muffins for breakfast and hoped that she wouldn't be her usual snippy self. Fiddlesticks! You want to make my breakfast muffins? Well, um, we thought... If he gave us the recipe... Give you the recipe? If you want my muffins, then I'll make them for you. The next morning, Millie and Molly couldn't wait to taste the yummy-smelling muffins <laughs> Aunt Maud had baked for their breakfast. Are they ready? Quiet! Out you come, out you come, out you come. Aunt Maud's out. a magician. I said quiet! If these muffins stick, I'll have you to blame. Out you come, out you come, out you come, out! Magic! You're a magician! Oh, no, I'm not. My chant never fails to deliver perfect muffins. That's all there is to it. But even though Millie and Molly had fed their brains with muffins, Miss Blythe chose Jack to tell his story first. And he'd obviously had a good breakfast too. He's 
So the team captain got the soccer ball at half time and filled it with gas. And when he kicked it, it went up, 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 and over the goal he said, into the net. And the good guys won the entire competition. The end. A very imaginative story, Jack. You may have five stars. No. If I can think of a story that's good, just keep eating the muffins. Oh, dear. Humphrey, Humphrey. Huh? Just as well I didn't pick you this morning. Have you not had your breakfast again? Um, no, Miss Blythe. I really don't like it. Well, you'll not be getting any stars if your story isn't any good. You need something to supply that brain of yours with lots of ideas. We can help. But the next day, when Humphrey ah! realised Millie and Molly were taking him to Aunt Maud's for breakfast, he didn't seem to care how tasty ah! the muffins might be. But she's scary. She's not scary. Just a bit, um, snippy. She's not as scary as your robot dinosaurs from outer space. Rawr! Well... Do you three <gasps> want your muffins or not? Ah! What on earth? Sorry, Aunt Maud. <laughs> and... Mum Lane and I ran and ran with the giant angry elephant getting closer and closer when suddenly, whoosh! Molly flew down in her yellow helicopter and saved us just in time. Hooray! And we lived happily ever after. Wonderful story, Millie. Five stars for you. Now, who will we choose tomorrow? Humphrey? What? I do hope you'll have breakfast soon, Humphrey. I'm running out of other people to pick. Millie and Molly had to find a way to get Humphrey to eat breakfast. So after school, Millie and Molly practiced cooking muffins themselves. That way, Humphrey wouldn't have to go to Aunt Maud's. They don't look as good as Aunt Maud's. And they don't smell as nice. Maybe they'll be alright once we get them out of the tray. We need to chant. Out you come, out you come, out you come, out. They're stuck. We don't have Aunt Maud's magic. They might still taste okay. It's no good. Humphrey will never eat these. It has to be Aunt Maud's magic muffins. The next day, Miss Blythe finally chose Humphrey. It was obvious Humphrey still hadn't had breakfast. Well, uh, well, um, there was... Uh, um... Humphrey, concentrate. Well, there was, um... Well, once upon a time, um... Oh, sit down, Humphrey. I'm afraid you won't be getting any stars for a story like that. Molly, have you got a story for us? Well, um, I'll try. <clears throat> Well, Molly, did you not have your breakfast too? I had Aunt Maud's magic muffins to feed my imagination. Well, then? Well, um, one day there was a princess called, uh, Princess Molly. <laughs> and she was the most cleverest painter in the whole world. But she couldn't find the right colour to fit Molly's her. story was long and complicated and very interesting and lasted right up to lunchtime. Of course, she finally found the right colour under the handsome prince, and the colour was yellow. And she finished the painting, and it was the most beautiful painting in the whole world. And she lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Lovely, Molly. Five stars for you. Humphrey, mm. I'm going to give you another chance tomorrow. I know there must be a wonderful story inside you but you'll have to release it with some nourishment before you come to school. Everyone's got five stars, and I want you to get five stars too. Humphrey, you just have to eat some of Aunt Maud's muffins tomorrow. You just have to, or you'll get no stars. But I can't go to Aunt Maud's house. She's too scary. Then come to my place. Molly and Dal get you some magic muffins. Come to your house. What's wrong with mine? 
Nothing, Aunt Maud. You've got a lovely house. It's just that, well, um... Humphrey's frightened to come here. Fiddlesticks! What's there to be frightened of? Don't stand on my parsley! Oh! Sorry. Well, what's Humphrey frightened of? I don't have a dog. Nothing's going to bite him. Well, he's frightened of you. Me? Double fiddlesticks frightened of me? You're not frightened of me, are you? Um, uh... Well, are you? Not that much. Hmm. I see. So, will you come to my house tomorrow and make your muffins for Humphrey? Our muffins aren't very good. Huh. I'll think about it. The next morning, Humphrey went to Millie's place with the promise of delicious magic muffins to help him earn five stars for his story. Hi, guys. Those muffins smell good. We can't get them out. Let's try Aunt Maud's magic chain again. She's not here, is she? Out she come, out she come, out she come, out! They won't come out! Out she come, out she come, out she come, out! Oh, fiddlesticks! Let me have those muffins, you'll ruin them! Don't be frightened, Humphrey. Aunt Maud wants you to eat her muffins. She does. You don't think I came all the way over here just to frighten you, do you? Um... Well, do you? No, Aunt Maud. Well, you'd better eat them. I will, I will! <laughs> out you come, out you come, out you come, out! Magic! Magic? Um, magic? With a tummy full of Aunt Maud's magic muffins, Humphrey grabbed his second chance to tell his story. The brave, brave space captain had caught Martian sickness from the robot dinosaurs and could only be saved by his two friends who were brave and true. Just in time, his two special friends flew from the moon to save him. They never gave up on him and space captain was saved because the two brave heroes brought him the medicine. The end. Five stars for you. Well done. Roar! <laughs> you realise Humphrey's story was about you two? No. You two were the true friends who saved Space Captain Humphrey. That's so nice. I'd never heard Humphrey say anything nice before. Maybe Aunt Maud's muffins really are magic. <laughs> <laughs>It was a very special day for Molly. She was getting ready to do one of her most favourite things of all with her best friend Millie. Don't worry, you're coming too. Mwah. We're going to have fun, Dolly. Molly, time to go. Hmm. Hmm. Dad, do you know where my book is? You mean Beetlejuice or the Riddle Book? It's out here. Are you ready to go yet? Coming! I'll put the rest of the stuff in the car. Okay! Yeah. Huh? Oh. Oh. Don't look at me like that, Tom Cat. You can come as far as Millie's place. But that's it. Oh. And over at Millie's place, Millie was getting ready too. Packing everything she thought she might need for their adventure. Ah. No! Don't get in the way, Mama Lee. You know you can't come. Lily, Molly's here. <laughs> Hurry up. Coming! Don't worry, Jemima. You're coming too. <laughs> Sandwich is nearly ready. Oh, she takes some yummy fruit. And something to drink too. Can we take some cake? Yeah, we can eat it after the sandwiches. What is that? Have you got everything? Oh! Somewhere. Are you sure it's in here? We put it in here after the last time, so it must be in here somewhere. You sure have a lot of interesting things in here? Yeah, everything except what we want. Here it is. Dad, we found the tent. One more thing and then we can go. Ready? <laughs> Finally, they were off. 
off to go camping overnight all by themselves. Once their dads had helped them set up, of course. I didn't know you had this many things, girls. We didn't want to leave anything behind. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't think you have. All the way down the back, Tom. Next time I'm hiring a truck. Oh, no, you don't. Naughty, we told you. Yes, mm -mm. you can't come. Mm -mm. Back inside. Sure, go on. I guess I just The tent was going to be set up way down near yeah. Millie's back fence, where the trees and bushes grew wild. I can't wait until the tent's up. Me either. We're going to turn it into a cubby house and make it comfy and everything. <laughs> Millie and Molly were excited and just a little frightened because this time they were going to have to be very brave. The first time they'd ever gone camping was in Millie's front yard. They had lots of fun setting everything up. This could be a bed for Jemima and Dolly. Great! I think they're going to be really comfy in this. Yeah. And we can keep special things in this. I already have a smooth stone, a cotton reel and some special shiny paper. Good! Marmalade! Ah! <laughs> and what do we do after the park? I don't know. Maybe get our skateboards. Hi, Jack. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. Millie and I are camping. We're going to stay up all night. All night? But even though Millie and Molly said they were going to camp out all night, when the sun went down and the happy sounds of the day disappeared, What's that noise? It's probably knocking. <laughs> Millie and Molly stopped camping and went inside the house. The second time Millie and Molly had gone camping, they set up the tent in Millie's backyard close to the house and stayed out till it was quite dark. Time is it? Late. Come here, Dolly. It's all right, Jemima. It's not that scary out here. Is it? Maybe we should go inside now. Let's stay in the tent a bit longer. <gasps> <gasps> But this time, Millie and Molly were determined to stay out all night. Okay, that should do. Dad, the sun isn't up yet. Stop <laughs> teasing. Did you hear some voices? Yeah, it sounded like Millie and Molly. But where are they? We're in the tent. You know. Can we push it up yet? Oh, is that what these lumps are? <laughs> well, I suppose you can push it up. No. Oh. I kind of like it the way it is. You do not. Come on, <laughs> let's get it up. Oh. 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 It's up. Yay. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks. See you tomorrow. I'll leave my hat if those two manage to stay out all night. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it too. Are you sure? We're sure. Well, it's not too far up to the house if you change your minds. We won't. We'll see. Good luck. So well, Millie and Molly <laughs> set about making their camp comfortable and enjoying their camping. <laughs> I brought a book. Me too, my favourite. Oh, Beetlejuice! <laughs> Hello? Anybody in there? We're over the back fence. Hi, Jack. Hi, Tom. Hi. How do you like our camp? We're going to stay here all night. All night? All night. But it'll get very dark. We've got a torch. But the tigers will get you in the middle of the night. There aren't any tigers in Millie's backyard. Are there? Of course not. See? A torch. No, the tigers got chased away by the bears. 
Yeah, big beds with big teeth. And they like the taste of girls. Grrr. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> See you in the morning. Yeah, if the bears don't get you. <laughs> um, maybe we should go in the house. You know, just before it gets really dark. No, we said we'd stay out all night. But we have to be brave. Together. Together. And so together, Millie and Molly ate their sandwiches and cake for dinner, while there was still enough light. Let's make sure we don't leave any crumbs. Why? We don't want to tell the bears. But there aren't any bears in your backyard. Are there? No. No bears in here. But just in case. And just in case, Millie and Molly made sure the flaps of the tent stayed closed so that no big animals, like bears, could look in. Even though they both knew that there were no bears in Millie's backyard. <laughs> Millie? Yeah? What's that shadow on? Oh, I, I, I think it's a tree. Can you talk, John? I don't think Dolly should sleep by herself tonight. I think she's frightened. Yeah. She's your mama too. <laughs> Let's read a book. Oh, I left my book outside. Me too. You'd better get it. You'd better get yours. What about the bears? I don't think they can read. But they can eat. The books? No, ah. But there are no bears. Good, so you can go and get your book. Let's go together. <laughs> There's the books. The bears didn't get them. There aren't any bears. I know, but they still didn't get the books. <laughs> ah! It's a bear behind you! <laughs> quick, quick, quick! Whose idea was this? Yours. I can't hear anything. Maybe the bears have gone. Can't say anything. This was your idea. It was yours. After all the excitement, Millie and Molly were so tired they were sound asleep in no time. It seemed like an ordinary day when Millie and Molly and Marmalade and Tomcat went for a walk. But it was a day everyone will never forget. The day Bouncer and Barker came to town. Time to go home, Taffy. I'll be fine. Can you help me up, please, girls? Sure. Oh. Uh, uh, there you are. Thank you. Did you get hurt, Mr. Limpy? Mm, just a bit shaken. Huh. You better see after your cats. It wasn't hard for Millie and Molly to find where the dogs had chased their cats. Oh, look at my poor truck. I'm so sorry, Doctor. No problem. There was nothing you could do. <laughs> 
Maggie, did you just say marmalade? And Tomcat. They ran straight out in front of my truck. And then those noisy dogs came chasing them. I crashed into poor Dr. Smiley's car trying to avoid them. So the dogs haven't caught them yet? Not yet. They went that way. Come on. Watch out for cars now. Yes, they came through here. Look at my lovely lettuce. I blame your pets for this mess. But it wasn't Mummy's fault, Aunt Maud. Or oh, Tomcats. They were being chased by those scary dogs. Well, if they hadn't come through here, those noisy dogs wouldn't have trampled all over my precious plants. Do you know which way they went? That way, to cause more trouble. I don't know why people have pets. At least vegetables are always well behaved. Old oh, fiddlesticks. Soon the whole town knew about Barker and Bouncer. They knocked over all the garbage. Hold the line, please. Hello, police? Yeah. How many? Two noisy dogs frightening the birds. Hold the line, please. Hello, police? Uh, yes, Aunt Maud. I'll be on my... Yes. Yes, straight away. Millie and Molly continued to follow the trail of destruction left by Barker and Bouncer, hoping Marmalade and Tomcat would be all right. Sorry, here you are. Thanks, Molly. Bye. Oh, oh they've knocked over our teacher. Are you all right, Miss Blay? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. But those rowdy dogs are a menace. Were Marmalade and Tom Carroll right, Miss Blythe? Oh, so far, Molly, so far. They went back into the park. Oh. Quickly, off you go. Oh, where's my ice cream? I had it in my hand when those dogs... <coughs> oh. oh, no! Leave our cats alone, you naughty dogs! What's going on here? Please, Miss Blythe, save our cats. Those dogs are trying to eat them. Hurry! Don't worry, those cats know how to look after themselves. Oi! Widen down! Knock it off! Now listen, you two. This is a nice, quiet town. People don't want to be alarmed or annoyed by your constant barking and rushing all over the place. Good. I see you understand. Put those dogs in a lead! Hey! Oh, Molly! Tomcat! Marmalade, you're all right now. Are those dogs going to eat someone else now? <laughs> no, no, I don't think you need to worry about them. They're just noisy dogs, not nasty. You'll get used to them. Soon, everyone in town got used to them. Mr Limpy learnt never to stand up when Bouncer and Barker were around. Jemima says... Millie and Molly realised that the dogs wouldn't hurt them, even though they barked so loudly. Anyway, Jemima says... And Miss Blythe knew to keep out of their way to protect her ice cream. Even the policeman's phone stopped ringing. Almost. Police station. Oh, hello, Aunt Maud. More barking, you say? Well, everyone else is getting used to it, and... Yes, Aunt Maud. No, Aunt Maud. Of course, Aunt Maud. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. At least vegetables are quiet. And although Aunt Maud did seem to complain more than others, it was really only poor Marmalade and Tomcat who had the hardest time getting used to Barker and Bouncer. So when one day Barker and Bouncer came barking at Millie's house, Millie and Molly thought nothing of it, so didn't realise that something was wrong. I can hear Barker and Bouncer. Sounds like they're in the yard. Look, I'm making two dogs a dough. <laughs> at least they don't bark. <laughs> but there was something very wrong. I last saw my cat yesterday. Are you sure it was stolen? Bolton never strays. Excuse me. Uh, police station. Oh, Aunt Maud. Uh, don't tell me those dogs are barking again. Dear, dear. No, oh, well, I'm sure they'll quieten down eventually. No, sorry, I'm way too busy to deal with noisy dogs today. Someone has stolen the ferryman's cat. His name's Bolton. My ship's mate. How long before they'll be ready? About half an hour. <laughs> now look what they're up to. Ooh, I've never seen Bouncer do that before. Me neither. Maybe he's going to join the circus. More like he wants to eat our dough. <laughs> well, at least the 
not chasing some mom lady and tomcat. But why are they barking at us? Maybe they want to eat us. No, they never have before. <laughs> I think they want us to follow. I'm not ashamed to say, I love that cat. Well, I'll do my best to find whoever's stolen both. Please. Police station. No, oh, Aunt Maud. Look, those two dogs. What sort of strange and shifty man? Where was he taking the cats? Thank you. Good luck. That's funny. I thought Marmalade and Tomcat would be up that tree. Especially when Barker and Bouncer are around. Maybe they've gone home. Why did Barker and Bouncer get us to follow them? I don't know. It's strange. Look, they do want us to follow. That way! Stop! In the name of the law! Barker and Bell. Oh, naughty dogs. Looks like Marmalade and Tomcat are all right despite nearly being stolen. Did the bad man hurt you, Marmalade? Poor Tomcat. I can feel his heart beating very fast. You two are nothing but trouble. Barking and carrying on all the time. How is anyone supposed to know when there really is something to be alarmed about or if it's just you two acting the fool? Now you've tripped me over, the cat thief's got away. And the poor ferryman may never see his cat again. You can look after our cats until a bosun comes back. Yeah. That's very thoughtful, but Marmalade and Tomcat belong to you. The bosun's my cat. Do you miss him very much? He's my ship's mate. You can't be a ferryman without a ship's mate. <sighs> I'd do if I was Tom Cat. But something good had happened. Millie and Molly saw that Bouncer and Barker had stopped chasing after cars. And Miss Blythe no longer had to worry about spilling her ice cream. Do you recognize Barker and Bouncer, Miss Blythe? Well, haven't they improved their behavior? Mm -hmm. The two dogs even managed to avoid upsetting Aunt Maud, which is a very difficult thing to do. Mm. So the policeman's phone didn't ring, and he could get on with trying to find the thief who had stolen Boson. So when Barker and Bouncer did start to make a fuss, everyone knew there was something wrong. Huh? Oh? I'll ring the police. you cat thief. Come down out of that tree. What took you so long? These wonderful dogs have saved the cats from the cat thief. Hooray! Now I know you've got the ferryman's cat. Eh? <laughs> Parker and Bouncer. Well done, you two. You're an asset to our town. In your Thanks, go. Parker. Thanks, Bouncer. We might have ever seen Marmalade or Tomcat again. So, with the cat thief in custody, the policeman soon found out where the ferryman's cat was. All right, bosun. Ready to cast off? And no one was more grateful than Millie and Molly. Bye, Mr. Ferry! Bye, bosun! And the ferryman, the barker and bouncer, had come to town.
Millie and Molly loved visiting Farmer Hegarty's farm. There was always something to see or do. This flower smells really nice. That cloud looks like a flower. No, it doesn't. Looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> you sound like Humphrey. Watch out, or my dinosaur from outer space will eat you up. <laughs> we should bring me Splash and everyone up here. They'd like it. A picnic. We could have a class picnic. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look, a pretty butterfly. Wait, little butterfly, show me where you live. <laughs> goes a long way. Why? Ugh, I see what you mean. Beefy. <gasps> mm, don't worry, he can't get out. I know, but he's still scary. have our picnic a long way away from Beefy. A picnic, Millie and Molly. What's the occasion? Um, we don't have an occasion. The farm's a nice place, that's all. We thought everyone would like it. Yeah, yeah I, I love picnics. I love picnics. I have to ever be. I haven't heard I'm sure we will. I won't. Hi. Well, that's a shame, Humphrey. Perhaps you'd rather not go. I have lots of chores here you could do, like cleaning the blackboard, and there's all that rubbish yeah. he's tending to. No, no, and... I want to go now. Oh, good. Well, then, we'll go this Friday to celebrate the end of the week. What do you think? Yay! Yay! Millie and Molly had volunteered to cook up a surprise for the picnic. Well, let's see what else is in the recipe book. But deciding what to cook was trickier than they'd expected. Chocolate cake. But not everyone likes chocolate cake. Hmm, banana cake? I think bananas give Jack spots. Well, what does he like? I don't remember. We'd better find out. So Millie and Molly started to watch what their friends liked to eat. First, they looked for Jack. Got him. Jack, he's going for something. What? We've got a carrot. Carrot for Jack. What? Nothing. Meg likes apples. Apples! George likes oranges. That's because they match his hair. <laughs> By the end of the day, Millie and Molly were already having ideas about what they'd cook for some people in their class. Uh -huh. Carrot cake for Jack. We'll have to get some carrots. Carrots. And Meg, she likes apples. Apple cake? Okay. Apples. And we can do an orange jelly for George. Orange jelly. We still have a lot of other people we don't know about. Like Sophie. Will we have enough time? The picnic's at the end of the week. I hope so. Everyone has to have something they like. So for the rest of the week, Millie and Molly watched their other school friends. And they watched. And they watched. Apricots. And they watched. Ice cream. Poppy will get the strawberry shortcake. And we can cook an apricot upside down cake for Elizabeth. She loves the smell of apricots. Blueberry muffins are ready. I'll get them out for you. Thanks, Mum. Are we cooking something for everyone now? We still haven't got anything for Sophie or Humphrey. We've only got tomorrow, because oh. the day after is picnic day. The next day, Millie and Molly watched Sophie extra carefully to see what food she liked. They watched her before school. Watch out! Ow. Didn't hurt. 
they watched her during class. And they watched her in the playground. But Sophie soon started to feel better once she'd eaten some of her chocolate, which gave Millie and Molly the clue they were looking for. Chocolate cake! That should be everyone. Oh no! We still haven't got something for Humphrey. I don't think he should get anything. See what he did to Sophie today? He's always bullying people. Mum says we should be kind anyway. Well, maybe we shouldn't leave him out. But what can we make him? The picnic's tomorrow. I don't even know what he likes. As the afternoon wore on, Millie and Molly's problems got bigger. Not coming? But why, Sophie? It'll be fun. A picnic on the farm. Uh-uh. But why not? Humphrey, he'll just wreck it for me. He's always picking on me. But Miss Flash will be there. He always does things when she's not watching. Well, we'll stop him. Yeah. Can you really stop him? Of course, you've got to come. The picnic's for everyone. Besides, we made you a chocolate cake specially. A chocolate cake? <laughs> so Sophie decided she would come on the big picnic to the farm. But Millie and Molly made sure that Sophie sat as far away from Humphrey as possible. Do you like your chocolate cake, Sophie? <laughs> I love it. Hey, there's real pieces of carrot in this cake. <laughs> I think Tom likes his blueberry muffins too. What a lovely picnic. Well done, Millie and Molly. Oh, look at the lamby. Come here, little one. Let me stroke your lovely woolly coat. <laughs> There, Sophie. Let's play over there, Sophie. You're so lame, Molly. Just ignore him. Let's go. Despite Humphrey's bullying, the picnic was a huge success and everyone enjoyed exploring the farm. Oh no! Humphrey! <gasps> Where are you going? <clears throat> What's he doing with Beefy? No, Humphrey! It's just a stupid cow, aren't you? Go on. Moo, moo. Dumb cow, moo! Oh no, he's getting angry! Get out, Humphrey! He doesn't scare me, stupid bull! Please, Humphrey! He's going to charge! He'll hurt you! Really? Get out of there! Quick! Run, Humphrey, run! Come on! Ah! Get up! I hurt my ankle!
very dear. Mm. Want a gingerbread man, Sophie? What's this for? So you can hit it out of my hand again? No. Thanks, Humphrey. Thank you, Humphrey. My mum made these for everyone. For saving me. Everyone loves gingerbread. They do? Yeah, everyone. You mean, we didn't have to make something special for each person? I would have had a gingerbread. Yeah, me too. Yeah, sure. I love gingerbread. Me too. Everyone. <laughs> and while Humphrey didn't quite have the manners to say thank you himself, he never did bully Sophie or anyone else in their class again. Millie and Molly had never been brave enough to sleep the whole night in Farmer Hegarty's barn before. But something very special was going to happen. Molly, they're here! They're here! Come on, Molly, quick! <gasps> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven! Mrs. had seven puppies! Aren't they cute? That makes Scout a daddy. Look, that little one can't get a drink. Oh, poor little man. Good morning, all. Sleep well out here? Oh, I see we've had some luck. Oh, but Farmer Hager, the littlest one can't get in to have a drink. No. Mm, that happens sometimes. Doesn't his mummy love him? It's not quite the same as us humans, Molly. It's nature's way. In the wild, the weakest babies are left out if there isn't enough food for a big litter like this. But can't you look after him? I don't have the time to look after every baby animal that can't look after itself. I've got a farm to run. But of course, if someone else... Oh, we'll do it! <laughs> Come on, little one. His eyes will open in a week or so and keep him warm. Lots of milk, lots of love. We will. Over the weeks that followed, Millie and Molly had fun looking after the friendly little puppy. But they did have trouble trying to find him a name. Let's call him Tiny. But what if he's big when he grows up? <laughs> what about we name him after Farmer Hegarty? He Hegarty, Hegarty, Hegarty. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> it wasn't long before the young pup was growing strong with all the care that Millie and Molly <laughs> were giving him. Here, puppy, puppy, puppy. We can't keep calling him Puppy. He needs a name. I can't decide. Well, he has a nice tail going there. Does that give you an idea? Wags? Wags. Wags? Come here, Wags. Come on, Wags. Wags, Wags, Wags. <laughs> Soon, Wags was old enough for Millie and Molly to teach him a trick. How to jump extra high. Okay. Fetch it, Wags. <laughs> Good trick, young fella. Good boy. Good looking dog, too. Worth a bud, I reckon. Good fella. Come here, good fella. Do you know those two people down there? No. Wags is making friends with them. Well, Wags needs to be careful. A bud stranger could make friends with him, and then we might never see him again. Wags, Wags! Come back, Wags! Come on, boy. Back here, Wags. Good boy. There's nothing wrong with being friendly, just with the right people. But Wags was always keen to make friends, even when he should have been doing other things. In behind! Round, Scout! Good boy, Scout! Your turn to try, Wags. Here's someone a little more your size. Come on, Wags, you've got a job to do like your dad. Get that lamb through the gate. Round, Wags. Come on, boy. Go on, Wags. Oh, look. He's making friends with that little lamby. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Mm. Well, that's all very nice, but that doesn't help me run my farm. What do you mean? He's good at catching frisbees. He can jump really, really high. I'm afraid that's no good to me, girls. This is a working farm. All the animals need to earn their keep. Even that little lamb will give me some wool one day. 
If an animal can't help me, I have to sell him. No! Sorry, but I can't afford a mouth that won't pay its own way. Well, he could come and live with me. Or me! You both have cats. Marmalade would never accept a dog in her house, and Molly... But Wes could be friendly, and my Tomcat would be friendly back. You live in an apartment, Molly. That's no place for a dog. Hmm. Please! I suppose I can afford to hang on to him for a bit longer. At least till he's big enough to look after himself. You can come and play with him until then. How's that? Okay, thanks. Wag! But the next time Millie and Molly came to play with Wags, something terrible had happened. Wags! Here, boy! Wags! Come on, Wags! Come back to us, please! Wags! No, look! No. I've been right along the main road. No sign of wags anywhere. Maybe he ran away. <laughs> now then, he knew you girls would be coming to play. I just hope he didn't get out and try to make friends with someone he shouldn't. But why would a stranger want to take him? He's the son of Scout, the best sheepdog around. That makes wags very valuable. Who knows why bad people do anything? Come on. There's one other place we can try. But even as Millie and Molly kept looking, poor Wags was being bundled into the boot of a stranger's car. Wags! Wags! Come on, boys! Wags! Wags! I'm sorry, girls. If he was just lost, we would have found him by now. Hmm. Let's hope whoever took him looks after him as well as you did. But Wags wasn't being looked after well. He was stuck in a cage with a bigger dog. The kind of dog that Molly was always frightened of. But Millie and Molly didn't give up looking for Wags. And if anyone sees him, his name is Wags. And he's very, very friendly. And we miss him very much. So if you see him anywhere, please tell us. Hmm? But no one had seen where Wags had gone. And when the stranger realised that Wags was no use on his farm, he didn't even feed Wags properly. Oh, Marmalade, I hope little Wags is all right. Where are you, Wags? We just want to help you. But Millie and Molly did help Wags. One night when the strangers had gone to bed, Wags realised that his enclosure had been accidentally left unlocked. remembered the trick Millie and Molly had taught him. The next morning, Millie and Molly were in for two big surprises, but only one was a happy surprise. Still no sign of wags. The other dogs have been drinking his water. Be done, Scout. Oh, Wags, we missed you so much. And so did little Lammy. Where have you been, you naughty dog? Looks like the young fella is big enough to look after himself. You don't oh, miss him so much. I know, I know. But he's a friendly dog, so the pet shop man will have no trouble finding him a nice home right in town. You'll get to visit him there. But what if he doesn't... What if Wags is sold to... To another country? Look, why don't you stay with him tonight, in the barn? 
If there is any way I can afford to keep him, I'll try to find it. But he's not a working dog. He's no good to me on the farm. All right. Thank you. didn't try to make friends with them? Of course not. They were strangers. Looks like Wags is useful after all. If I didn't have a guard dog like Wags, I would have lost half my flock. Guess he's just <gasps> paid his way. You mean he can stay on the farm? Can he? I can't afford to let him go. Millie and Molly always loved visiting Grandpa and Granny Pig. Even though the old couple weren't Millie or Molly's actual grandparents, it was like they were. This oak tree was planted by Grandpa's parents just before he was born. It's so beautiful. That's nearly a hundred years ago. Wow, that's even older than my mum and dad. When you were born, did you live in a cave? <laughs> Not quite, but we didn't have cars to drive. We used horses, and there was no electricity either. Oh, that'll be the strawberry jam. I'll get this. I would to Mr. Limpy. And when I'm over at his place... See if he needs anything else. I'll have plenty of strawberry jam. <laughs> What are you two giggling about? We like the way you finish each other's sentences. <laughs> it's because we've been together for such a long time. Oh, I just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what you're going to say next. Oh, really? You're going to say, don't overdo it carrying the firewood. Oh, I guess he does know what I'm going to say. Even if he's not going to take any notice. <laughs> <laughs> Millie and Molly helped Grandpa deliver the firewood. That lot should keep Mr. Limpy going for a bit. Grandpa, Molly's got a riddle. <laughs> oh, yes. What side of a cat has more hair? Hmm. I don't know, Molly. What side of a cat does have more hair? <laughs> the outside. <laughs> oh, Molly. <laughs> They were all going to spend a fun afternoon together. Molly, it's time Grandpa was up from his nap. You can tell him another riddle, too. Grandpa, Grandpa, I've got a riddle. I've and what about you, Millie? Grandpa, Been on any adventures lately? Well, I'm thinking about going to a jungle. Hey, Granny Peg, Grandpa can't get out of bed. He didn't oh. even laugh at my riddle. Now, don't fuss. I'm just feeling a bit tired, that's all. I'll fuss if I like. Millie, Molly, I want you to run into town and fetch Dr. Smiley. Quick as you can now. Millie and Molly ran as fast as their legs would take them, all the way into town, to get Dr. Smiley. There's nothing to worry about, Granny Peg. Grandpa's just wearing out. It's time he went a bit slower. Now, let me finish up in here. I won't be long. Thank you, Doctor. Come on, girls. There's still plenty to do with my strawberry jam. You have to think about Granny Peg. She'll live to be a hundred, but... But I won't. How much longer have I got? You may not see another winter. Right. Thanks for telling me, Dr. Smiley. There are a few things I need to do. Well... Try to do them a bit slower. 
But of course, Grandpa wasn't going to do them a bit slower. So instead of arguing with him, Millie and Molly helped him stack the firewood. And the next day, bag all the potatoes. And the day after that, stack the pumpkins out of the weather. And finally, they picked all the strawberries from Grandpa's famous strawberry patch. Granny Pig's going to make lots of jam with these. That's the idea. Thanks for all your help. I've got a little something for you both. What is it? They're acorns. A seed of an oak tree like that one. If you plant them and look after them, they'll grow. Like you, into something quite beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Grandpa. We'll look after them and help them grow. And think of you every time you look at them. <sighs> What's wrong, Grandpa? Nothing, Millie. Nothing at all. In fact, everything is fine. Everything is ready. When Millie and Molly turned up the next day, they found Granny Pig sitting under the oak tree, looking very sad. Granny Pig, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Oh, uh, Grandpa. Grandpa finally wore out last night. Oh! He left me this note. You can read it out, if, if you like. My dear Granny Pig, there are enough pumpkins, potatoes, and firewood to last you until, until you, you are, are 100. 100. And there's enough strawberry jam for everybody. Please put me under the oak tree, and I will wait for you there. Love. Grandpa. Grandpa. Grandpa gave me an acorn to grow. It's going to be a great big oak and always remind me of Grandpa. I hope you don't mind this pot, little acorn. Will you help it grow, Grandpa? Now that Granny Peg was alone, Millie and Molly spent more time with her. They often sat together under the old oak to be close to Grandpa. And this photo is of us 75 years ago on our wedding day. You look beautiful and Grandpa's so handsome. Indeed he was. You might get married one day, Molly. What kind of a man would you like to marry? <laughs> well, he'd have to like riddles. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Millie? Oh, I don't think I'll get married. I'm going to have adventures and live at the South Pole. You could do both. And good morning, Granny Pig. Well, if it isn't little John Oddbottom. <laughs> hmm. I'm the town planner now. Well, John Oddbottom, what can we do for you? I'm here to inform you that under local bylaw 266A, this land and all holdings will be resumed under the Act to facilitate the construction of a new thoroughfare. What did he say? I think they want to build a road. A highway, directly through here, all the way to town. But the tree's in the way. Hmm. Under Ordinance 2945 of the Tree Removal Act, subsection 11B, the tree will be cut down. Oh! No! But Grandpa's here. He's waiting for me under this beautiful old tree. Oh, I'm sorry, but the government and the council have elected to exercise their authority in this matter and it would be a contravention of my duty not to enforce the order. I beg your pardon? He says they have to cut down the tree to make way for the highway. <laughs> Wait! Don't you like trees, Mr Oddbottom? Oh, I love all herbaceous and woody perennial life. And I climbed this very quirkus robor when I was just a little older than you. He did. But uh, we require a new highway into town. Good day to you all. Millie and Molly tried not to think about what was going to happen to the oak tree. Instead, they tried to think about Granny Pig's 100th birthday. Do you think she'll like this yellow paper? Of course. Everyone likes yellow. When the day came, Granny Pig didn't want a big party. She was just happy to have a quiet afternoon with Millie and Molly. 
some of my special pumpkin scones. Oh, my favorite. I made them with the last of the pumpkins Grandpa grew. You can put some strawberry jam on them if you like. Yes, please. Oh, is that all the jam that's left? Yes, but, but you can use it. Just don't eat too much because I'm making mashed potatoes with dinner and that'll be the end of them too. The potatoes Grandpa grew? They've lasted a long time, haven't they? We've bought you something, Granny Peg. Happy 100th birthday. For me? Well, this is a nice surprise. Oh, it's lovely. It's a picture of Molly and me with Grandpa. I mixed up a riddle and we laughed really hard. <laughs> Thank you so very much, girls. It's the best present I've ever had. After Millie and Molly went home, a happy but tired Granny Pig put the very last log on the fire and climbed into the nice warm bed she used to share with Grandpa. That night, Granny Pig began her journey to be with Grandpa once again. My acorn's growing. Mine too. One each for Grandpa and Granny Pig. Hey, Grandpa and Granny Peg both had long and happy lives. And now they'll be together forever under the old oak tree. But later that week, Millie and Molly saw the town planner driving towards Grandpa and Granny Peg's house, followed by big road building machines. They're going to cut down the oak tree. We've got to stop them. Please, please, leave Grandpa and Granny Peg alone. You can't cut down that tree. Please. I've discovered a little-known subsection of the town planning and thoroughfare bylaws. <clears throat> the officer supervising a project may show discretion when an object of value or significance is involved. Does that mean you're going to cut down the tree? No. It means that I can make them build the road around the tree. The tree stays and so do Grandpa and Granny Pig. Together. Yeah! And whenever people travel to Millie and Molly's town, they always wonder why the road kinks around the grand old oak tree. Millie and Molly know why. <laughs> Millie and Molly had brought their cats to school because Miss Blythe had asked them to. Marmalade is my cat, and I love her, even though sometimes she can be naughty. <laughs> Thank you, Millie. And what about your pussycat, Molly? Well, this is Tomcat, and he's a boy cat. And he's best friends with Millie's cat, Marmalade. Oh, and he likes yellows, like Millie and me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Who wants to bring in their pet tomorrow? Fine! Poppy and Alf, we look forward to seeing your pets tomorrow. Now, I hope you're all getting your pets in shape for pet day. It's two weeks away. Yes, Miss Blythe! There'll be a couple of mystery prizes and one for the most obedient pet in the whole class. Stay there, Marmalade. Millie and Molly Please, were sure that Marmalade and Tomcat knew how to be obedient. Marmalade first. Marmalade, come here. Come on, Marmalade. Marmalade. Oh, come on, Marmalade. Tomcat will do it. Tomcat! Tomcat! Here, puss, puss, puss! Ah! 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 Mm. This could take forever. This is Torty. He's a long-necked tortoise who likes eating insects and worms. This isn't my dog. He's a stray, but I look after him when he comes to visit our caravan. We call him Puddles, because sometimes he makes mistakes and has to go outside. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think it's time he went outside. <laughs> Come on, Puddles. Miss Bly? Yes, Harry? Do I have to have a pet to come to pet day? Of course not. I'm sure you'll have fun enjoying other people's pets. Mm, no. Millie and Molly felt sorry that Harry didn't have a pet, but they had their own problems to solve for pet day. Obedience problems. Get back! Get back! Good dog, Scout! Get around! Scout's so 
obedient farmer, Higgity. He is. Tomcat could never do that. Mummily neither. Can I try calling Scout? Sure, call him. Scout, Scout, come here, boy. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> if you like, you can take him to Pete instead of Marmalade. Scout will win for sure. Oh, I couldn't do that. Marmalade's my pet. I just have to get her to do what Scout does. Well, the best trick is to feed Marmalade and Tomcat when you call. If they think they're going to get fed, they'll be very obedient and come every time you call. This is Zoldan. He protects my house. I have to talk to him in Martian. Ziggity doa, Zoldan. Ooh. I told him dinosaurs from outer space are coming to eat my bedroom. Wow. This is Roger the goat. He eats anything. One day he even ate my homework. I remember that, Jack. I also remember not quite believing you. Oh, he's eating my spare. Roger put down my spelling book. Sorry, Miss Bob. What's wrong, Harry? I wish I could have a pet that could eat my homework. No. Mama Haggerty has lots of animals. Maybe he could lend you one. They're all too big. I live in a flat. Me too. You could have a cat like me. I can't. Mum's allergic. Oh. Oh. oh dear. Well, it looks like no spelling today. Fortunately, he hasn't eaten the arithmetic book. Aww. That afternoon, Millie tried Farmer Higgity's obedience trick with the food. Marmalade? Marmalade! What a good cat you are! Are you going to win the prize for the most obedient pet? I think you are. Molly tried too, with the same success. Come on, Tom Cat! Look what I've got! Nice, tasty, fishy treats for a good pussy cat! <laughs> Good boy. This is Mr. Cottonbottom. <laughs> he likes lettuce and carrots and leaves little jelly beans everywhere. <laughs> well, my pet's too big to bring into the classroom. So he's looking through the window. <laughs> oh, well, bless my Scottish soul. <laughs> Millie tried hard to think of a pet that Harry could have. Marmalade! Come on, Marmalade! But when Marmalade stopped being obedient... I've got your favourite dinner! Millie couldn't Marmalade. worry about Harry, too. Marmalade! Come here, Marmalade! Oh, Marmalade! But Molly had a thought. A budgie would be just the pet for Harry. Oh, sorry, Molly. I've just sold the last one. Was poor Harry ever going to get a pet of his own? What is it, Marmalade? What's down there? Marmalade! Now I know why you were being naughty this afternoon. There was a mouse in the house. Good pussycat. Now, what'll I do with this mouse? This is Stinky the skunk. Oh. He's called Stinky because he can spray his stink a really long way. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, George. I think perhaps he should go outside. Don't worry. He only sprays when he gets a fright. Well, thank you, George. Is there anyone else with a pet today? Me, Miss Blythe. Me. I got a pet. Wonderful, Harry. Millie gave it to me. It's a mouse. His name is Brian. Oh, oh no. I'm allergic. <laughs> When pet day arrived, Millie and Molly were still hopeful that Marmalade or Tomcat would be more obedient than all the other pets and might win the prize for most obedient pet. <laughs> right then. Thank you, everyone. What a lovely group of pets we have today. But not everyone can win, so here are the prizes. The prize for the smallest pet goes to Joe for his hermit crab. Yay! Oh, oh, yay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The prize for the biggest pet goes to Chloe for her wonderful horse. Oh, well, oh, yeah. 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 Congratulations, Chloe! <laughs>
And the prize for most unusual pet goes to George for Stinky the Skunk. Hey, what about my dog? He speaks Martian. That's unusual. Humphrey, you have to admit, Stinky is very unusual. He should get the prize for the stinkiest pet. Mum says she can still smell it. <laughs> Now, the final prize for the most obedient pet. I'd like you all to put your pets on the rope over here. Good luck with okay. Mum, right, Mimi? Thanks, oh, Mum. Good luck with Tomcat. Now, hurry along, everyone. Remember, your name is Brian. Don't forget to come out when I call you. Zoldan, Zipper the Nasta Jedi. All right, all the pet owners back to your start positions. And then we'll start. Now quiet everyone. Ready? Call your pets! Mama! 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 Almost everyone's animal was being obedient. Except Harry's mouse, Brian, who hadn't even come out of his box. Please, Brian, please come out. Run away. Oh, Harry. Never mind, Harry. Mama Lee will find you a new pet. She's not very obedient, but she's a good mouser. I don't want a new pet. I want Brian. There he is. That Brian. 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 It's tickling. Well, I declare Harry and Brian the winners. Yay, um, Harry. I can't come too close. I'm allergic to mice, you know. Hooray. Toti came second. Oh, yeah. I can't help it, stupid skunk. Now even Zoldan won't come near me. Zoldan! Zena Zenaban! Come back, you stupid dog face! For the rest of the afternoon, everyone went about collecting their pets. And that night, the two best friends decided that their cats were very special, even if they weren't always obedient. I never trade Marmalade in for Scout or any other pet. Me neither. Especially not a skunk. <laughs>they were visiting a new friend, Maxter. He'd just moved to town from the city and he had something special. Hello, I'm Millie and this is Molly. Well, well, well. Pass it, pass to him. Oh, We've come to play with Maxter and see his giant television set. You'd best come in then. Go, go, go. have come to play with you, Maxter. They can watch the TV with me. Oh, gee, thanks, Maxter. We've never seen a television this big before. Yes! Run! Go! Woohoo! 
Oh, is it true you've got 20 channels? 45. Oh. But it never seems to get off this channel. It only has soccer. We don't mind. Great kick! Shoot! 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 Oh, great pass! Hit the Don't kick in the head! Go! Go! Do you ever watch anything else? No. Not even cartoons? Are there any about soccer? I don't think so. He's offside! You can't do that! Well, thank you very much for letting us watch your big television. We might go outside now. Okay, bye. Wouldn't you like to come out and play too? Outside? Why? And he never plays outside. He's always inside. Really? No fresh air, no exercise. I thought you said Max delight soccer. He does, but he never plays it, only watches it on TV. On the biggest oh. TV in the whole wide world. That's big. He lives in the city and didn't have a park or anything. Well, he does now. Maybe he needs to learn to play outside. Ah! Marmalade must be hungry. It's delicious flesh. Mum, Dad. To... Yes, Millie? You want to know how to teach Maxter to play outside. Invite him to the park. Hmm, okay. But can we get a television as big as the one Maxter has? Of course. Really? As soon as you've finished school and high school and university and get a job so you can pay for it. Dad! This ferocious killing machine with its three rows of razor sharp... <laughs> so Millie and Molly invited Maxter to the park. Not too high. They played on the swings and waited for Maxter. <laughs> They played on the roundabout, but still no Maxter. They played on the slippery dip. But still there was no sign of Maxter. So finally Millie and Molly went to find out if something was wrong. Television. His foot was miles over the line! Ah! Well, well, well. You said you'd go to the park, and here you are, stuck in front of the TV. It's going off. No! Wait, please! Can we watch cartoons? No television. Please? Outside, you can play in the backyard with your new friends. Get some fresh air and exercise. It'll be fun! Hmm. But no sooner had they all gone outside, but Maxter had other plans. Not television again! Shh! My mother will hear! Well, well, well! Um, hi, Mom. Outside, but now! But no matter what Maxter's mother said, Maxter always found a way to watch television. Maxter! Hi. This old TV used to belong to my grand, but luckily it still works. I kept it for emergencies. Go! A go! Millie and Molly wondered if Maxter would ever stop watching television. By the time the weekend came, Millie and Molly had a plan. They were going to tempt Baxter outside. No! Kick it to the other man! Oh, this way! Around the hmm? back, Molly! Coming! Coming! It's heavy! Oh, that shouldn't be a gun! had to choose. Television or find out what those girls were up to. It's going to be so much fun! Yeah! And then we can paint! What are you doing? Oh, we thought 
thought you were watching television. I... I was. Em, better all your noise. What are you doing? Can you guess? No, can you just tell me? I want to go and watch the telly. <laughs> no, we can't tell you. You have to guess. I don't know. Please just tell me. All this stuff. Why do we need all these things? Wood, nails, bucket, rope, boxes? I don't know. We're building something. Building what? <laughs> something up high. An aeroplane? <laughs> it has something to do with the tree. Have another guess. We're building something and it goes in the tree. And we can all play in it. You... you mean a tree shack? Tree hut! I've never seen a real tree hut before. Only on television. If you help us, you'll have your very own. Really? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. For the rest of the day, Millie, Molly and Maxter worked hard to build their tree hut. And Maxter didn't once think about watching television. Well, well, well. Hey, Mum, look what we made without any help or anything, all by ourselves. This is our tree hut. And these are our curtains. And we even have a lift. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it great? Magnificent! Well done! But it's time to get down now. Millie and Molly have to go home. OK! Coming! But the tree hut was the beginning of a new problem with Maxter. I'm staying up here for dinner. Can you bring me my soccer magazines? Please, Mum? Maxter stayed in the tree hut for the rest of the afternoon. Maxter stayed in the tree hut for dinner. Maxter stayed in the tree hut to sleep. Maxter stayed in the tree hut even when it rained. After a couple of days, Millie and Molly were beginning to wonder whether building the tree hut was a good idea after all. At least Maxter's getting lots of fresh air. But no running around. He really likes being up in that tree hut. Yeah, the same as he really likes watching television. When he does something, he really does it. There has to be a way to get him down. Look out! Oh! Sorry! That's all right, Jack. I've just had an idea. Aren't those soccer posts just behind Maxter's house? Yes, you can see the tree hut. So, thanks. Jack, will you and Tom do us a favour? Hi, Maxter. We've come to look at the view. Yeah. View? It's just the house. But what about out here? Here I come. Here comes a goal. A soccer field. You could play soccer instead of oh. reading about it. Or watching on a TV. Jack and Tom are in a team. You could join. Maxter had won Man of the Match. Well done, Maxter. You were great. I've decided on television. Mm. Oh, no. We thought you gave up watching television. I did, and I'm going to practice soccer so much that I'll be a soccer star. I'll be on TV instead of watching it. <laughs> well, well. well. Millie and Molly knew that Maxter probably would be a soccer star because when he did something, he really did it. <laughs> there was always something new for Millie and Molly to find at Farmer Hegarty's place. Huh? Did you hear that? What? Over here. This way. In the forget-me-nots. 
Look! <laughs> oh, how cute! A baby goat! Hello! <laughs> oh! <laughs> what did you do that for? Oh, hey, don't bite me, little man! Oh, got it! <laughs> Watch it, Millie! <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Mr. Forget me not! We found him in the flowers! Oh, more like bump me not! <laughs> Millie and Molly had fun running from Bunt Me Not. Bunt Me Not! Look out! <laughs> and little Bunt Me Not's gentle bunts. <laughs> but as Bunt Me Not grew up, his bunts were no longer gentle and no longer fun. Bunt Me Not! Look out, Bunt! Hanging in! Huh? What? Bunt Me Not! <laughs> oh! Oh! Goat has no respect for anyone. If it wasn't a purebred, I'd get rid of it tomorrow. <laughs> Bart Minot doesn't care much about anyone else. Can we teach him? We could try. <laughs> Bart Minot, are you going to be good? You have to think about other people's feelings, or you won't have any friends. Do you think he understands? Well, he hasn't tried to bunt us. Uh-oh. Hello? Farmer Hegarty? I've come for that manure for my vegetables. Farmer Hegarty! Farmer Hegarty! <laughs> Don't come over here, Aunt Maud. Bunt me, not my bunt you. <laughs> no goat dare bunt me. He will! Fiddlesticks! Now, where's Farmer Hegarty? I'm here. Where are you? Farmer Hegarty! Look out! Don't you dare! <laughs> Never! He doesn't respect anyone! Not even you! Double fiddlesticks! <laughs> Well, Farmer Hegarty, I hope this manure helps me win another prize for my vegetables this year. Your goat hasn't done me any favours. He hasn't done me any favours either. Here's the ice you asked for, Farmer Hegarty. Just put it on that plastic chair, please. I'll shut the door. Does it hurt? Only when I breathe. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh. Ah! I like goats anymore. Don't worry, Molly. Not all goats are like that, bunt me not. That very afternoon, Farmer Hegarty introduced Millie and Molly to old Nibbles. <laughs> Go on, Molly. Nibbles is very gentle and polite. You won't get a bunting from her. <laughs> He's nibbling my ear. See? No bunting. Only nibbling. Give her this cube of sugar. Good nibbles. She understands. You treat her nicely, she'll treat you nicely. Mutual respect. Respect. But Bunt Me Not didn't understand. He was just jealous of the attention Nibbles was getting. <laughs> oh no, not again! Don't worry. Nibbles won't take any nonsense from this young fella. See? Bunt me not's learning something from that older goat. A bit of respect. <laughs> Maybe he'll be nice to all of us now. Oh, I'm not taking any chances. Perhaps a spell on your own will teach you some manners. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look out! He can't break this gate.
Bumpin' us getting away. Bumpin' us getting away. Get me a cushion. A cushion? How's a cushion going to catch Bump Me Not? It's not for that goat. It's for me. We better catch that goat before he bunts someone else on the bottom. And after he bunted me on the bottom, he chewed through this line. My old fairy nearly went floating off on her own. So after he bunted you on the bottom... He chewed a hole in my balloon and then ran off towards town. But at least he didn't bunt anyone this time. Farmer Hegarty? Your goat bunted me on the bottom. <laughs> uh, sorry, um... Did you see the train bump me not went, Dad? He was heading for Aunt Maud's. Oh, oh no! Do something, Hegarty, before your goat eats through any chance of me winning an award at tomorrow's agricultural show. Right you are. I'll, uh, I'll try to grab him. Again? If you don't get that goat out of here, I'm going to call the police. Not the police. They won't know how to handle a goat. He's a valuable animal, you know. I don't want him hurt. <gasps> Poor Bumpy Not. Fiddlesticks. That goat is costing you a fortune. All the damage. It's got no respect for anything. Just a minute. Respect? Respect. We've got an idea. We've got to get back to the farm. Well, you better hurry. That animal will be into my prize tomatoes next. Farmer Hegarty drove his truck all the way to his farm and back, as fast as it was safe to. Oh, I hope your plan works, Millie. <laughs> We're back, Aunt Maud. You took your time. That beast has nearly finished off my tomatoes. If he gets into my carrots, I'll have nothing left to win any prizes with. Come on, Nibbles. What? You've not brought another eating machine into my garden. Don't worry, Aunt Maud. Nibbles is here to help. Would you like some sugar, Nibbles? Good girl, Nibbles. You like being stroked, don't you? You've got lovely fur. <laughs> He's going to bunt someone. We're trying something. Bunt me not respects Nibbles. We're hoping he'll do whatever she does. Come on, Nibbles. Let's go and play. What a good goat. Here he comes. It's all right. They're leading Bunt Me Not away from your vegetables. Good boy, Bunt Me Not. Want some sugar? The plan works. I've never seen anything like it. All's well that ends well. But who's going to pay for the rope on my ferry? And my damaged balloon. And Millie's jeans. Well, um, are I... And if my carrots aren't enough to win an award tomorrow, you're going to have to buy me a trophy from the shop. Poor Farmer Hegarty. How was he ever going to make good all the damage that Bunt Me Not had caused? Would you like a ride in our cart, Nibbles? <laughs> Back at the farm, Bunt Me Not was learning that if he acted like Nibbles and showed respect to others, he could join in the fun too. <laughs> Do you think Bunt Me Not wants a ride in our cart too? Maybe. <laughs> Would you like a ride in our cart, Bunt Me Not? If you're right, and some sugar. <laughs> Is he going to bunt us? <gasps> I think he's learned his lesson. Well, I hope so. I figure the only way I'm going to pay for all the damage Bunt Me Not caused is for him to win the prize for the best goat in the show tomorrow. Do you think he can win? Final contestant for Best Goat in Show is Farmer Hegarty and Bug Me Not. Please present your animal to the judge. You two take him. Farmer Hegarty held his breath. It wouldn't do for a goat to bunt the judge. Excuse me, judge. Hmm? Bug Me Not is just learning that if you show respect, you get respect back. Don't worry, I'll show him plenty of respect. Who's a good boy, Bunt Me Not? <laughs> Now, let's have a look at you properly. Hmm, I see he lives up to his name. He bunted me not. <laughs> <laughs> She's written down the winner, Farmer Hegarty. And the winner of the cash prize for Best Goat in Show goes to...
certainly not. Owner, Farmer Hegarty. Congratulations, Farmer Hegarty. So Farmer Hegarty was able to pay for all the damage Bunt Me Not had caused. And Aunt Maud did win a prize for her carrots. Though she couldn't understand why there were less of them when she took them home again. Perhaps Bunt Me Not still had a few more lessons to learn. <laughs> Nobody ever thought craft time in Millie and Molly's class could lead to danger. After all, what could be dangerous about kites? What colours are Diamond Kite going to be? Who cares? As long as they fly high up into the sky. Yeah, real high! It has to be yellow too. Can't it be red? Yeah, red! I could paint made of flowers. That'd be pretty. Pretty? Ours isn't pretty. It's gonna carry bombs and drop them onto the robots from outer space. Tapu! Humphrey, kites are peaceful things. Something to help us appreciate the power and beauty of the wind. Oh, that's boring. <laughs> Young man, there's nothing boring about the power of nature. But there is something boring about staying in the classroom while everyone else is flying their kites. Mind your manners and get on with building your kite. Mm -hmm. Well, will you look at this table? I see you've nearly finished your kites. Except Molly wants to paint red flowers on this one. Yuck! <laughs> it's not yuck! Well, there's nothing wrong with flowers. But perhaps red spots might suit all of you better. Molly? All right. I'll give it chicken pot. <laughs> Right after school, Millie and Molly and Jack and Tom headed out to Farmer Hegarty's place where there was lots of open space to fly their new kites. Is the ferry broken, Mr. Ferryman? No, Millie. I'm just not running the ferry in this wind. She can break away from her cables and the old girl would be blown all the way to China. Oh, that sounds scary. It yeah. sounds exciting. It wouldn't be too exciting if you were the one stuck out at sea with no way to get back. Maybe it's too windy to fly our kites. Are you scared? She's not scared. She just doesn't want to wreck her kites. It'll be okay. Come on! Yeah, let's go! Let's see Farmer Hagedy first. See if it's okay! When the wind turns the blade of the windmill, then it turns the drive shaft, which turns the pump, which sucks the water out of the ground and into the field. Can't you use an electric pump? Sure, but why not use the power of nature? It's free. So, is it all right if you fly our kites and your paddle fin, please? Of course. Just don't get near Beefy. This wind's good for me, but it really puts Beefy in a bad mood. He's always in a bad mood. <laughs> Worse than most today. Watch out, Molly. The big bad bull is gonna get you. Ooh. Don't! Ooh. <laughs> He'll get you too, young fella, me lad, if he breaks down that fence. We won't go any beefy. Oh, the wind's got it! Mine too! Yeah, look, Molly. Don't let them go too high. Why not? They might go away. They won't. You can really feel them pulling. Yeah. When they go up so high, it makes my tummy go all wibbly. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Want to go? No, thanks. I will. Oh, it's pulling me. <laughs> Don't let it go. You scared the country blow all the way to China? No. It's just, well, I think I like making them, not flying them. <laughs> hey, my turn. Come on, you guys, give me another go! So Molly just watched as the other three took it in turns flying the kites in the wind. Until Jack wanted to see what else was happening. I bet this wind is making the waves big in the sea. I know a really good place we could watch from. It's just over the hill. It's at the top of a cliff. A cliff? Let's go. We'll be really careful. Come on. We're coming. It's a really big cliff. 
with really sharp rocks at the bottom. If you try to scare us, we won't come. There's nothing to be scared about. We're not scared. Are you scared, Molly? No. could to find Farmer Hegarty. But he wasn't where she'd seen him last. Tom would fly over the next hill and out of sight. chance to catch them before they get to the river. We're starting to drop! Oh. We're going to land in the river! Ah. They're coming! Hold on! Hold it on, dear, and you can drop into the hay! Don't let go too early! We're going out over the river! Be ready! No! Ah. No! Are you there? Boys! Are you all right, boys? 
voice. Speak to me. Nature first hand. I suppose you'll be making some new kites now. Only little ones, cause, cause next time we could get blown all the way to China. Oh dear. What do you say, Millie, Molly? They were your kites too. We don't want to be blown to China either. It's too scary. Scary? But Molly, you are the bravest. Really brave. Really, really, really bravest. No, I was scared. If you hadn't been brave enough to run past that angry bull, Molly, these boys might not be here to tell the tale. Yeah! She's right! Doing something even though you're scared is the bravest thing you can do. I think that makes you a hero. Huh? Yay! 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 Hmm. Well, I'm only brave when I really want to be. Jack and Tom decided that they would never again tease Molly about being scared. And on the first kite they remade, they let Molly paint red flowers. <laughs> Millie and Molly's class was about to have a visitor. Is that everyone? I'd like you to meet B.B. Brown. Hello. Hello, B.B. Brown. He's going to be with us till the holidays. You can find a seat next to Millie and Molly. They don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> Millie and Molly liked B.B. Brown. He was quick with a smile and laughed at Molly's riddles, even if he already knew them. Where does a river keep its money? In a river bank. <laughs> I get it. And a river is always tired because it runs everywhere it goes. <laughs> and B.B. Brown was kind when Millie accidentally left her lunch at home. You can have some of my lunch, Millie, but it has boy germs on it. Thank you, B.B. Brown. <coughs> boy germs. <laughs> now I don't have to give up my banana, too. I'm better now. Oh, here. I don't like bananas anyway. <coughs> banana! Hey! <laughs> Millie and Molly really liked B.B. Brown. Look over there! He was fun to be with and nice and smart too. And I found this pretty fossil near the river. It's a leaf. Yes, B.B. Brown? Fossils can be as old as dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? Whoa! Maybe a little dinosaur saw this leaf just before it was eaten by destroyer Tyrannosaurus Rex! Roar! <laughs> oh, Only you could turn a beautiful fossil into a life and death struggle with giant beasties. And that will be lunch. But after lunch, the whole class was in for a nasty surprise. Does anyone have Millie's fossil? She left it in her desk and now it's not there. Oh, I don't have it. I didn't say you do, Humphrey, but someone has taken it without asking and I'd like them to own up. Well? It'd be better to tell me now. I'm going to find out sooner or later. I've got it. <gasps> I see. Well then, stand up please. Your fossil, Millie. And what else have we here? Isn't that Jack's missing ruler? Hey! And Alf's pencil sharpener. And B.B. Brown, there's a lot of things in here that don't belong to you. What have you got to say for yourself? He's a robber. <gasps> he should go to jail. That's jail? enough, Humphrey. Oh. I don't think you're quite ready for jail yet, young man. But if you don't change your way, that's where you might end up. Millie and Molly. I have a little job for you both. Millie and Molly's job was to be with B.B. Brown every moment he was at school. To make sure he didn't steal anything and try to help him change his way. Oh. Uh -huh. 
they kept an eye on him in class. <coughs> Millie and Molly went everywhere with BB Brown. Well, almost everywhere. But whenever they weren't looking, BB Brown continued to take things that didn't belong to him. <coughs> but BB Brown was still fun to be with, so Millie and Molly liked spending time with him, even after school. Don't fall off the cracks, or the lions will get us all! <laughs> Yay! Made it! And the lions didn't get us! Yeah! Oh! Oh! Look at that car! I want it! You're not going to take it, are you? Not if you're looking at me. But we can't be with you all the time. You have to change away, BB Brown. Why? It hurts people when you take things from them. But they can get another one. Take it from someone else. Millie and Molly started to think that their friend, B.B. Brown, would never change his way. In fact, B.B. Brown seemed to be getting worse, arriving at school before Millie and Molly to see what he could steal. <gasps> oh, Miss Blythe, I did Well, Mr. B.B. Brown, helping yourself to my purse, are you? Uh I was just... Yes? Hmm. I see being with Millie and Molly hasn't changed your way. I think I'm going to have to resort to more drastic measures. I'm calling the policeman. Policeman? <gasps> Morning, Miss Blythe. This is the lad? Yes, officer. I've spoken to his parents, and they agree with your suggestion. Oh, please, don't take me to jail. Oh, you're going to jail, all right. But this time it's just for a visit. I'll show you the life of a thief. No, don't! Please, Mr. Policeman, he's frightened. He should be. Well, can we come too? Mm -hmm. To keep him company? Please, Mr. Policeman? Oh, I'll check with their parents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Broken nose, Bill? This is the young chap I was telling you about. A thief, eh? Sometimes. I'm a thief. Started young like you. Thieving. Taking things didn't belong to me. Been in this place more and I've been out. The policeman put you in here? No. I put me in here. Didn't change me way. Kept pinching stuff. Now I'm stuck in here by myself. My only friend, this old cat. Molly and Dad have cats. Bet you can take them to the park. Have fun in the sun whenever you like, eh? Uh-huh. Well, I can't. You want a life like mine, Sonny Jim? Well, do you? I've been stuck in here longer than you've been alive. Can't remember the last time I smiled. So I'm telling you to not make the same mistake. <laughs> Get it, Sonny? All right now, Broken Nose Bill. You're scaring the lad. Good, because maybe he's getting the message. If I can get you to change your way, if I can save you from coming in here, then it might make up for all the unhappy times I've had because of me thieving way. What's it going to be? On the way home, B.B. Brown was quiet for a very long time. Till finally... I want to change my way. Will you help me? Yeah! Miss Blythe will be pleased. No, everybody can help B.B. Brown by not leaving precious things out to tempt him. He won't steal anything of mine because my destroyer Tyrannosaurus Rex robot will eat him. <laughs> you can put that away, Humphrey. We're here to help B.B. Brown not eat him. <laughs> It was hard for B.B. Brown to change his way, but Millie and Molly helped him. Hello, B.B. Brown. I hope that's your bag. Remember what Mr. Broken Nose Bill said. Thanks for coming with me. I didn't know if I could stop myself from trying to steal this car. Why don't you save up for it? Hmm, save up. So Millie and Molly helped B.B. Brown run errands and B.B. Brown saved and saved till finally the end of term came. I did it! I did it! I 
bought the car all by myself, and I didn't steal it or anything. We knew you could do it. Does it make you feel good? It makes me feel great. For the most improved conduct of anyone I have ever taught, here's a marvelous report card full of stars. Yay! Well done, Baby Brown. Thank you. Ah! Oh, no oh, one stole oh, my destroyed Tyrannosaurus Rex robot. And, and Baby Brown was the last one who had it. I put it back. Well, it's not here. Humphrey, be sure before you accuse someone. He's a thief. He stole my destroyer Tyrannosaurus Rex robot, just like he stole Millie's fossil and Jack's ruler. All and right, Elf. Humphrey. Well, Baby Brown, what have you got to say? I didn't take it. I promise. I don't even need Millie and Molly to help me anymore. I've changed my way. He has the fly. He has truly. He stole it. It has to be him. Oh. Oh. I don't take things that don't belong to me anymore. And to prove it, you can have my new car instead. Whoa. That's very generous, B.B. Brown. Not the actions of a thief, hey, Humphrey? But I still haven't got my destroyed Tyrannosaurus Rex robot. There it is. In the toy box in the corner. It's in the toy box. Oh, dear. I see other toys seem to have eaten your dinosaur, Humphrey. <laughs> You might have something to say to B.B. Brown, hmm? Yeah, don't steal. Sorry was what I had in mind. You accused him of stealing when he doesn't do that sort of thing anymore. Sorry, B.B. Brown. Here's your excellent report card, young man. Well done. Just before he left to live in another town, B.B. Brown gave Millie and Molly a present to say thank you for being good friends. A new fossil? Thank you. A new riddle book? And I paid for them too. <laughs> and B.B. Brown sent a present to someone else too. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty stars. Thank you, Mr. Broken Nose Bill. You helped me change my way. Your friend, B.B. Brown. Miss Blythe was hoping to form a musical band with Millie and Molly's class, but it wasn't going well. I don't think this triangle's very good, Miss Blythe. Gee, <coughs> this is broken too. And the drum. Oh, heavens. Is it supposed to do that? Oh, dear me, no. Are there not any instruments that work? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a thick beast. <laughs> yeah, it's a giant dinosaur from outer space. <laughs> Nothing on this earth could make that noise. <laughs> but we can't have a class band with these. The school gala day is coming up. We could have a stall, raise money and buy the school some new instruments. Yeah. Yay! Right, so what will we sell in our stall? Oh, I know! No, Humphrey, we're not selling dynamite. Oh. The class didn't take long to come up with something they could all try to make. Dad, Dad, we're going to make shots and stuff. Mum, do we have any material? Where's my money box? Is there anything in it? Nan, I need something to make a shirt with. Nan, do we have something? Soon, people began to make shirts for the gala day stall. Millie and Molly had combined their pocket money and bought one big piece of material to make two shirts. Ta-da! I've already cut out my shirt! Is it for someone from outer space, Humphrey? No. Why? It seems to have three arms. <laughs> oh, I meant to do that! <laughs> no laughing now, everyone. It's hard to get it right first time. Have another go, Humphrey. I'll make something with everyone's mistakes and offcuts. What will you make, Miss Blythe? You'll have to help me decide. It could be a mystery prize. We could sell tickets. Indeed, we could. It'll be a raffle, and whoever wins will get the surprise I make. Yes! Yeah. But not everyone was joining in the shirt making. Where's your shirt material, Alf? Don't have any. But the more shirts we sell, the more new instruments we get. But my nan doesn't have any spare material. Can't you buy any? I haven't got any money. Nan, neither. Oh. So Millie took Alf to see Mr. Limpy, who paid him to do some jobs. 
And Millie sold Mr. Limpy raffle tickets too. Mr. Limpy? Yes, Millie. Would you like to buy some tickets for our mystery prize? Yes, certainly. And Molly took Alf to see the bookshop owner so he could earn some more money. And while she was there, she sold more tickets for the mystery prize. And together, Millie and Molly even took Alf to see Snippy Aunt Maud and tried to sell her raffle tickets. Yes, yes, what is it? Even though Aunt Maud wasn't particularly fond of musical instruments. Musical instruments? Or class bands. Class bands? Please, Aunt Maud. Mm. Here. Thank you, Aunt Maud. Fiddlesticks. Thanks, Millie. Thanks, Molly. I've got all the money in my hanky. Bye, Alf. Finally, Alf had enough money to buy material to make a shirt for the gala day store. You're gonna crack and you break your back. Millie and Molly thought that everything would be fine. Everyone would make a shirt and the class would raise enough money to buy new instruments. But when Alf got home, things weren't quite so fine. It's only soup tonight, Alf. I broke the false teeth. Can't eat hard food till I can afford to fix it. You can fix them tomorrow. But that money is for your shirt making. It's not important. You're a good boy, Alf. The next day, Millie and Molly were surprised at Alf's news. She needed the money more than me. She couldn't eat. She's my lovely nan. I know, but how will you get material to make a shirt? My nan will find a way. How? She always finds a way. She makes food by growing vegetables. And she makes delicious dinners from leftovers. And she never throws anything away. And, and one day, she's even going to find a way to take me to the big city where her sister lives, that she hasn't seen for years and years. You'll see. I hope so, Al. See, I did it. Two sleeves. Well done, Humphrey. Now all you have to do is make sure both sleeves are the same length. Easy. Here, Alf. I have material for you for shirt making. Oh, thanks, Nan. I knew you'd find a way. Where did you get it? Her quilt? But how will she stay warm in her bed? She says it's summer. She doesn't need it. Gala day's at the end of this week. But what about when winter comes? We'll worry about the quilt when winter comes. Nan will find a way. I need to start my shirt. But Millie and Molly were worried about Nan not having a quilt now. And by the time I shorten one side too much, and then the other side too much, and well soon, I didn't have any sleeves at all. That's fine, Humphrey. It'll be a special Humphrey-made sleeveless shirt then. Someone will love it. Yeah, right. Now it needs some buttons and a collar. Off you go. This is dumb. Miss Blythe, can we talk to you please? About Alf Nan? Let's talk about Alf Nan while the others are at lunch. And so we're worried. Making shirts and getting new instruments doesn't seem as important as our Sam being warm enough at night. I think you're right, Molly. And she doesn't even have enough money to see her sister, who she hasn't seen for years and years. So what can we do to help? I've got an idea. We both do. Very good. Let's hear it. Well, you know the raffle. Yes. Well, Molly and I... The end of the week came quickly, and Gala Day was upon them. And from the start, the class stall went well, selling the colourful shirts fast. that? Try it on. Jack made that one. I think it'll fit, Dad. Looks good. Hmm. Are you sure? There's something funny about it. No sleeves. But I like it. 
like it. I know it doesn't have sleeves, but I like it. Makes me look kind of like a punk rock star. Yeah! <laughs> I made that shot on purpose! Sold! Look, Nan, the very man's wearing the shirt that I made. It was the first one to be sold. Well done, Alf. Thank you. That's all the raffle tickets sold, Miss Bly, and here's the money for the last show. Well, that's a very fine job, everyone. Well done. Time to draw the raffle, then. Oh. <laughs> May I have your attention, Lee? Sorry, sorry about that. Well, it's time to draw the raffle. And I'd like to thank everyone who bought a shirt. I'm sure you'll agree the class have done a great job making them. Right, Millie, would you please plunge your hand into the tickets and pull out the winner of the surprise raffle? Go on, Millie. And the winner is... The winner is... But I... Bring out the prize for us now, please. This patchwork quilt has been made from all the offcuts of the shirts the class made. It's even stuffed with down collected by the generous people I'm proud to call my class. Oh, well, Congratulations. This is very nice, but I cannot take it. I didn't buy some raffle tickets. I have no money for such things. But it has your name on the ticket. It does? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they all got my name on them. Oh, you found this out, I'm afraid. The class, in fact, everyone who bought a ticket, well, we thought you should have it. I... Betty. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> we just thought... It's only a quilt. Not as good as my shirt. Terrific. <laughs> 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 this should keep you warm. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. We've decided not to buy instruments with the money we've made from the stall. We think the money should be used for something more important. Alf and his Nan were off to the big city to see the sister Nan hadn't seen for years and years. And as for the class band and their instruments, well, they just had to make do. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Millie and Molly loved visiting their older friend Heidi, or as everyone called her, Heidi Untidy, for very obvious reasons. <laughs> Come on, Heidi Untidy! The Bedouin princess was trapped in the tent. The kidnappers were holding her for ransom, and she was the only one who knew the way out of the desert. The princess knew she had only one chance to escape. She used a trick her mother had taught her, the ability to throw her voice. She made the call of the rare and mystic Sahara Nightingale. Yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo. <laughs> to the kidnappers, it sounded like the valuable bird was just outside the tent. They greedily rushed out to grab yet another treasure. It was all the time the princess needed. She escaped from the tent into the desert. She scared the kidnappers' cats away too. <laughs> she hid in a leafy oasis amongst the undergrowth, careful to avoid the gaze of the silvery moon. Come on, Millie, Molly. The kidnappers will see you. <laughs> Do you think they saw us? I think we huh? will. Oh, Mom, 
Well, just get into the exciting bit. It's my favourite book. Well, I'm sorry. It's time for Millie and Molly to go home. Aww. It's dinner time. Can you come back tomorrow after school? We can finish the story then. Yay! The next day went very slowly indeed for Millie and Molly. Finish my breakfast. Can you please drive me to school today, Dad? You're very keen to get to school this morning. The sooner I get there, the sooner it will be over and I can get to Heidi and Tidy's house. Yeah, sure. When I finish my toast and tea and sort the garbage and wash the car and... Dad! Perhaps Heidi and Tidy will bring the book to school, Millie. Then you won't have to wait till this afternoon. Heidi and Tidy doesn't come to our school. Remember? Oh, well, I'm sure the day will pass quickly enough. Bye, Mum. But the day seemed the longest day ever. Finish these sums and then we're going to have some real adventure. About a princess in the desert, Miss Blythe? Oh dear me, no, Millie. We're going to have adventures with spelling. Uh -huh. And it wasn't even morning tea time. Finally, school was over. But still, things seemed to get in the way of Millie and Molly finding out what happened to the princess in Heidi Untidy's story. But at last, late that afternoon, Millie and Molly were back at Heidi Untidy's house. We lost the book? Now we're never going to find out what happened to the princess. It's not lost. It's in here. Somewhere? But where? We have to know what happened to the princess. We just have to. We'll find it. to tidy the room up. What? But we'll help. Yeah. So Millie and Molly helped Heidi Untidy tidy her room, hoping to find the missing book. But they weren't really tidying. More hiding the mess in drawers and boxes and the wardrobe. But still the precious book was nowhere to be seen. Nowhere. Well, this is an improvement. But we still can't find the book. We're never going to find out what happened to the princess and those bad kidnappers. Well, tomorrow's not a school day. You might have more luck then. But that night, Millie and Molly discovered they had more to worry about than a missing book. Marmalade! Marmalade! Dinner! Marmalade! Tomcat! Tomcat! Here, puss, puss, puss! No, not since you've been home. Hmm. Well, when did you see her last? I don't remember. Well, we better start looking. Marmalade! Marmalade! Marmalade, are you up there? Come on, Marmalade! 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 Tomcat! Tomcat! Here, puss, 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 puss! Come on, Tomcat! Molly has some nice food for you, Tomcat! Tomcat! Marmalade! Please, Marmalade! Tomcat! Marmalade! Come on Marmalade. Out, Tomcat! Marmalade. Where are you, Tomcat? Molly's missing it! Be a good cat now! Marmalade. Everyone looked late into the night, but there was no sign of Marmalade or Tomcat anywhere. Don't 
worry, Jemima. Mom Lady will be all right. She has to be. I hope Tomcat is brave like the princess in the desert. Maybe he'll be back in the morning. The next morning, there was still no sign of the cats. Millie, Millie, have you seen Tom Cat? We searched and searched all night, but we still couldn't find him. We can't find Mama Lady either. <gasps> she didn't come home for dinner. Maybe kidnappers took them. What if we never see them again? Poor Tom Cat. We have to do something. What? Ask everyone who saw them yesterday. Only Heidi and Tidy saw them. Maybe she knows where they are. Sorry, I don't know where they are. Uh, I was going to look for the book again. We can't help you today. We have to find Marmalade and Tomcat. Did you hear that? What? Marmalade? Marmalade, is that you? Where are you? That's definitely Marmalade. Tomcat, are you here too? Have they been hiding? Are you in here, Tomcat? Tomcat! Marmalade? Tomcat! Tomcat! Shh! Listen to where the meowing's coming from. Over here! Sounds like it's coming from the wardrobe. Definitely in here. Careful. Oh. Well? Oh, poor Marmalade. Everything's all right now, Marmalade. How did they get in there? <laughs> we must have locked them in there yesterday. Accidentally. When we were tidying up, looking for the book. They must have been in there all night. Sorry, little man. Oh, I can hear him purring. <laughs> Marmalade, too. <laughs> but we still haven't found my favorite book. And we've made another mess. So Millie, Molly and Heidi Untidy set about tidying up again. Only this time they did it properly. Folding and stacking and hanging. And all the while they made sure that Marmalade and Tomcat weren't accidentally tidied up too. And as the very last toy was being put away, Heidi Untidy found her favourite book. Oh, here it is! Here's the book! The kidnappers were about to find the princess, so she tried to distract them again. <laughs> but the kidnappers didn't fall for the trick a second time. They soon found the princess, but she whistled over her magic carpet. Let me try. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a magic carpet. So it would have understood you meant to whistle. And before the kidnappers could catch her, the princess jumped onto the magic carpet. Whoosh! And flew up into the sky to safety. And the princess lived happily ever after, while the kidnappers were lost in the desert forever. The end. I'm going to be a princess for the rest of the day and have my kingdom painted yellow and my people will have to tell me riddles all day long. <laughs> well, I'm a princess too, who keeps lions and tigers as pets. And marmalade. <laughs> and I live in a cave. Well, I'm a princess too, who has a library of 10 million books and read them out every day to my tidy kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> So Millie and Molly and Heidi, who was never untidy again, spent the rest of the day playing at being princesses. Hey, here's a story about a lost cat. No thanks. We know how that one goes. <laughs>lots of different people, but they were on their way to visit someone very different from anyone else they knew. You'll never get away from me! <laughs> different from Humphrey, who was loud and aggressive, but he was never dull.
are you doing, Humphrey? I'm setting a trap for giant robot dinosaurs from the moon! Why are you wearing those funny clothes? To protect me when I catch them in the trap! How does the trap work? The baddies are going to run into it, and I'm going to catch them like this, and save the world, and be famous! And then, I can tell everyone what to do. Well, we're going to visit Ella Bella Boo. Oh. You should take a rope, too, to tie her up. <laughs> I can show you how. Oh, Humphrey, <laughs> she's not that bad. She's funny. Elf was different, too. Gentle and caring. Hi, Elf. Hi, Millie. Molly, want to help me? I'm building a house for all the ants to live in. What happened to their other house? A car ran over it, and now they haven't got anywhere to live. There must be thousands of them, but I can't count them all. Sorry, Elf. We'd love to help you and all the ants, but we don't have time today. No. We're going to visit Ella Bella Boo. Really? Ella Bella Boo? Well, good luck. <laughs> we don't need luck. She's sweet. Bye. We'll help you next time. Good luck with your house building. Thanks. <laughs> Aunt Maud was certainly different, snippy, and just a little bit scary. She's there, doing some gardening. Maybe if we run past, she won't see us. Let's go, quick. Millie, Molly, what's the rush? Um... Well, speak up. There must be a reason you're running. You do know I don't like running. I like things orderly, quiet. Well, um, we're in a hurry. To see someone. Someone? Who? To see Ella Bella Boo. Not oh, fiddlesticks. No one's in a hurry to see that one. It's hard to believe she's my niece. She's a menace. But she's funny. And sweet. And needs a firm hand and some straightening out. But Millie and Molly liked Ella Bella Boo just the way she was. <laughs> Hello, Ella Bella Boo. Millie! Molly! Hello. <laughs> Read your book? We brought Beetlejuice. It's our favourite. <coughs> book, 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 book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <coughs> this is our favourite book too. Beetlejuice. <coughs> hat. <laughs> That's not a hat. <laughs> Ella Bella Boo certainly was different. She liked to test the toothpaste in the bathroom, and then the soap. Oh! <laughs> Billy and Molly thought Ella Bella Boo might be a musician one day. Or a farmer. <laughs> She's pretending to be her daddy. She loves his company. <laughs> But whatever she was going to be, Millie and Molly liked Ella Bella Boo <gasps> just the way she was. <laughs> so when Ella Bella Boo went to stay with Aunt Maud for a few days, Millie and Molly were happy to offer some help. Us. I don't need any help, thank you, Millie, Molly. I can... <laughs> Ella Bella Boo, put that down immediately. See? All she needs is a firm hand. Discipline. But Aunt Maud... No, I won't hear it. I'll have that little niece of mine behaving the way I want. Aunt Maud, you should... Listen to me. What chaos would there be in the world if everyone behaved differently and... Aunt Maud, look! look. Oh! Oh, my prize-winning carrot stop! Oh! Aunt Maud! Carrot! <laughs> Are you sure you don't want any help? Fiddlesticks! It'll take more than a black eye to slow me down. This ice will stop the swelling. Ella Bella Boo will just have to learn. She'll have to fit in with what I want. <gasps> Fiddlesticks! Hat! 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 <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute! It's not cute. It's... <laughs> Are you all right, Aunt Maud? I'll be fine. I tell you, I don't need any help. See? Completely under control.
all. I'll have her behaving properly like I did as a child in no time at all. Now, won't that be a good thing? I said, won't that be a good thing? Yes, I would. Ella Bella Boom will just have to learn to control it. Water, water, water! Now put that down immediately, young lady. I've just about had enough of your nonsense. What wheelbarrow? Oh, that wheelbarrow. That was close. I could have done myself an injury. I don't want to wake that little troublemaker. Does your leg hurt very much, Aunt Maud? Only when I think about how it happened. Are you thinking about that now? Yes, I am. Right. I think I know what to do now. Ella Bella Boo might be a little tornado, but she's met her match with me. Are you sure? We'd still be happy to help you, Aunt Maud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. When she's finished her nap, I'm going to teach her discipline through the power of gardening. Ella Bella Boo will be the best behaved child in the whole town. You won't change it too much, will you? Little six, the more that child changes to be like me, the better. Well, we could still help. I said I don't need any help. Aunt Maud? What happened to your head? Never mind. Is Millie here? Yes, yes. Molly's having dinner here too. Good, fine, excellent. I need their help. Now. Hurry up. Coming up, Maud. You girls know her better. Maybe you'll have more luck. Where was the last place you saw her? Well, we were out in the garden and I just put something away and came back. The gate was closed, so she must be hiding somewhere here. Somewhere on the property. But I've looked everywhere. Ella Bella Boo doesn't like to hide. No, she couldn't sit still long enough. Maybe she's doing something she likes to do. But Ella Bella Boo wasn't testing the toothpaste or the soap in Aunt Maud's bathroom. Mm -hmm. Nor was Ella Bella Boo playing with the pots mm -hmm. in Aunt Maud's kitchen. And she wasn't even trying to make hats out of Aunt Maud's books. She's a terror, but I wouldn't want anything to happen to the little mite. It's going to be night time soon. Are you sure you looked everywhere in the garden? Even behind the big bushes? Yes. I've been past what's left of my prize carrots 20 times. And the hose looked under the wheelbarrow. Oh, fiddlesticks. I just put my gumboots away and... Gumboots? Yes, that's what I said. Gumboots. Where? What? The gumboots. In the shed, of course. Come on. What's going on? She loves gumboots. Let's go to the garden chest. <laughs> there you are. See, she's wearing your gumboots, Aunt Maud. Maud, Maud, Maud. <laughs> What's so funny? She's saying she's you, Aunt Maud. She's copying you. Fiddlesticks. Me Maud. Look, me Maud, she's gardening Maud. too. Just like you. Me Maud. Me Maud. Me Maud. Oh. Hmm. <gasps> Are you smiling, Aunt Maud? <laughs> Absolutely not. A few days after Ella Bella Boo went home, Aunt Maud noticed how quiet it was. Very quiet. Too quiet. Little sticks. Even when she invited Millie and Molly around, she wasn't satisfied. You two are very quiet? Well, um, you see... Well, speak up. I'm not going to bite. Molly? We're quiet because we didn't want to make you cross. Cross? Cross? Now, why would I get cross? 
So, to everyone's surprise, Aunt Maud invited someone who never noticed if Aunt Maud was cross. everyone to be the same? Fiddlesticks, that'd make a very boring world, wouldn't it? Well, wouldn't it? Yes, Aunt Maud! <laughs> I want to find a special one, Millie. There's some leaves over here, Molly. Millie's garden Lots was a great place to find interestingly shaped leaves for Molly's collection. It was a place they might find other things, too. Oh, look, Molly. What about this one? It's an interesting shape. I've already got one like that. It's pretty. Well, let's see what else. Ah, oh, here's a whole pile. Hundreds and hundreds of leaves. There must be some in here you don't have. Let's see. Oh, look. Yeah. An egg. Can you tell what sort of egg it is? You know what's inside it? Sorry, Molly. I don't know very much about eggs. Maybe it's a chicken. Buck, 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 there's a little baby animal in here. And it'll be ours. Oh. But what is it? Maybe it's a goose. Honk, 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 honk. <laughs> if you're not careful, you won't have anything at all. That egg needs to be looked after. You'll need to give it extra special care if you want it to hatch. Mm. How? What do we do? You need to find somewhere that's always warm and soft. Maybe there's a snake in the egg. Yeah, a slippery snake. <coughs> Look out! Good catch. Oh, that was close. Come on, Marmalade. We need it to keep the egg warm. I know. We won't frighten you again, Marmalade. I promise, no more snakes. Come out. Please. <coughs> Good girl. Every day, Millie and Molly hoped that the egg might hatch and wondered what little animal might emerge. It could be a crocodile. <laughs> Please, Marmalade, I promise not to make any more crocodile noises. I promise I won't either. It could be a platypus. What noise does a platypus make? I don't know. Maybe they don't make a noise. As the days and weeks went by, even Millie and Molly's friends, like Humphrey, tried to guess what kind of egg it was. I know what's inside that egg. What? A dinosaur! Tyrannosaurus Rex from outer space! <laughs> Please, Marmalade, come down! Humphrey's gone away, and dinosaurs from outer space don't exist. <laughs> Do they? Course not. Well, I don't think so. After nearly a whole month of Millie and Molly patiently watching the egg and patiently wondering about the egg and patiently coaxing marmalade out of all sorts of hiding places, something began to happen. Look, it's moving. It's cracking open. <gasps> what is it? Shh. It's a duckling. A duckling! A cute little duckling! He's gonna be our duckling! He'll need a name. Um, let's call him Beaky. That's a good name. Beaky. But Beaky wasn't Millie's duckling, nor Molly's duckling. Beaky had seen Marmalade first, so Beaky thought Marmalade was his mother. Oh, that's so cute! So wherever Marmalade went, Beaky went too. To breakfast. To lunch. Hey, that's not a dinosaur from outer space. No, Beaky thinks he's a cat. <laughs> a cat? Funny looking cat. 
<laughs> he thinks Mom Lady is his mommy. Watch. Oh. So when Millie and Molly wanted to teach Beaky about water, <laughs> poor Marmalade had to come too. Watch out, Marmalade. But Marmalade's patience was really tried when Beaky was learning how to peck. <laughs> oh, Marmalade. Marmalade, what are you doing up there? Oh, little Beaky's so cute. But little Beaky didn't stay little. <laughs> Millie, Molly, I think it might be time for Beaky to go back to where he belongs with other ducks. No, it's not fair to him and it's definitely not fair to me. Look at the mess he makes now. I don't want to have to clean this up forever. But we'll clean it up. Yeah. But when Millie saw her mother give a look like that, <gasps> Millie knew they would have to find a new home for Beaky in the park with the other ducks. Of course, there was only one way for Millie and Molly to get Beaky to go to the park. Come on, Marmalade. You know Beaky won't follow us. Only you. All the other ducks at the park seemed to love the pond. So Millie and Molly were sure Beaky would want to join them. Go on, Beaky. Go and play with the other ducks. Make some new friends. <gasps> <gasps> She still wants to be with Marmalade. Hmm. Maybe if we hide Marmalade, then Beaky will go to the other ducks. Come on, Beaky. So Millie and Molly hid Marmalade where Beaky couldn't see her and tried again. Come on, Beaky. Into the pond now. <gasps> Beaky, don't go behind the tree. Beaky, no! Oh, he found Marmalade. What now? I know. We'll hide Marmalade in a better place. So with Marmalade cleverly hidden, Millie and Molly tried once again. No, into the pond. Come on, Beaky. You like it here. This is your new home. Please, Beaky, be a good duck. Aha. Uh -huh. Beaky will have to go to the pond now. Huh? Oh, no. Ah. He's never going to join the other ducks. You'll have to be more patient. But, Mum... Beaky can't stay here. You'll just have to keep taking him back to the park until he stays there. So each and every day, Millie and Molly took Beaky and, of course, Marmalade to the park and tried all sorts of tricks to get Beaky to stay with the other ducks. <laughs> But each and every day, Beaky would follow them back home again. Until one day, Beaky saw something in the park that was different. Millie and Molly waited a couple of days before they visited Beaky again. Hurry up, Mum! Please! I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm sure Beaky isn't going anywhere. Even Marmalade was keen to see how Beaky was settling in at the park. But when they arrived, they were in for a surprise. There's his friend. Where's Beaky? Maybe he didn't like it here, but didn't know the way home and got lost. Now, now, don't think the worst. He might be here yet. Have a good look around. Here, Beaky! Beaky, Beaky! Come on, Beaky! Come out, come out, wherever you are. Beaky! Beaky! Come on out, Beaky! Beaky! We've looked everywhere. <sighs> Maybe a duck thief came and put Beaky in a bag and... 
let's give it a bit longer. Look, where's Beaky's friend gone? He might know where Big is. We thought Beaky was a boy duck. Does this mean Beaky's going to have a family? I think it does. But this time you won't have to guess what's in the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't long before Beaky brought her new family to show Millie and Molly. Because they were the best of some friends. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Beaky, 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 you're back. Come down, Marmalade. The ducklings won't hurt you. You liked Beaky when she was a baby, didn't you? There's nothing to be afraid of. class always found games to play in the schoolyard but there was no extra equipment to play on nothing to add to their fun but one day at the toy shop oh look at that that box it's got a jungle gym inside it's got swings and climbing things wouldn't that be fun to play on there's lots of boxes you must have to put it together it's the best jungle gym money can buy. What if we had this in our playground? This school doesn't have that sort of money. It costs a lot a jungle gym like that. Aww. Oh, you're not going to give up that easily, are you? Molly? We could save up our pocket money. You'll need a little more than that, I'm afraid. Hmm. Millie? We could sell something. Yeah, yes. Idea. Any ideas? Yeah. Biscuits? We can make biscuits and sell them. A biscuit factory. Chloe. I think biscuits are a bad idea. Huh? Bad idea? Yeah. Let's sell a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Humphrey, if you have something intelligent to say, put your hand up. Sorry, Miss Blythe. Indeed. Chloe, you have another suggestion. I think we should make chocolates. Mmm, chocolates. <laughs> well, shall we have a vote? Who wants to make chocolates to raise money for the jungle gym? Biscuits? Well, biscuits it is. Hmm. It was your idea, Millie. You'd better come up with a plan. Well, um, Alf is good with numbers. He could work out how many biscuits we need to make. Yes. And I know where to get a good recipe. And I know all about ovens. Good, Poppy. Yes, everyone should pitch in. Sophie's careful, and so is Chloe. So, um, they could buy all the ingredients from the shop. I'm not helping. I'm going to do my chocolates. But if you don't all work together, it'll be harder. I can make the money all by myself. Well, then, I wish you good luck. You'd all best get cracking, then. Aunt Maud had a fine biscuit recipe. Just a minute. But Molly needed Millie to come with her. Sometimes Aunt Maud could be a bit, well, uh, snippy. Here's the recipe. Thanks, Aunt Maud. You're very kind. <laughs> Little sticks. Sophie, I've got a job for you. Here's a list of everything we need to make the biscuits. But Sophie can't carry it all on her own. Now that Chloe isn't helping, I'll help her. But you are going to do the oven. I can do the oven. How hard can it be? So Sophie and Poppy collected all the ingredients they needed for the biscuits. Hi, Chloe! Hmm. 
As soon as Sophie and Poppy were back, the real biscuit making began. Oh, Marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> While Millie's mum watched Jack carefully put the biscuits in the oven, Chloe was working hard too, making her chocolates. Two cups of cocoa, a cup of peanuts. Even though she had no help, Chloe didn't seem to be having any problems at all. Not like over at Millie's house. <coughs> oh no! Be careful, they'll be hot. <gasps> the oven was on too high. Can't use those. They're wasted. Oh, oh no. no. Sorry. Maybe Poppy should have done the oven. Don't worry, Jack. Yeah, we'll just make some more. Yeah. But my sons say that we haven't got enough money for any more ingredients. But we won't need any more ingredients, as long as we don't burn any more biscuits. I'll help you with the oven. Then we'll both be good at it. But we'll need to sell every biscuit we make. George! Now George was a very good salesman. He persuaded the cafe owner to sell some biscuits. And the bookshop owner to sell some biscuits. And even the pet shop owner agreed to sell biscuits to his customers. But could the class make biscuits without burning them? Here comes the next bag. Are they all right? Let me see. Perfect. Good one, Jack. Poppy helped. Let's make another batch while these get finished. Meg, get ready. Now Meg was meticulous, always good with details, so she spread the icing. Then Tom had an eye for the middle. He placed the jelly beans just right. And Humphrey, well, Humphrey took care of quality control. Mm. Finally, Elizabeth, who had the neatest writing, did all the packaging and labelling. Oh no! George has just found out. Somebody else wants to buy the Jungle Gym. Oh. <gasps> if the Toy Shop Man doesn't get a biscuit money by the end of the week, he's going to sell the Jungle Gym to someone else. Oh, let's give up. We can eat all the biscuits. No! We just have to work harder. Let's finish making the rest of the biscuits. Poppy and Sophie, you have to start selling what we already have. Hello, Mr. Limpy. Hello, Poppy. Sophie, what can I do for you? Would you like to buy some biscuits? We're trying to get enough money to buy a jungle gym for our school. Oh, I just bought some chocolates from Chloe. She said she was doing the same thing. Oh. oh. Despite little setbacks, Thank you, Farmer Haggerty. everyone worked hard to sell all the biscuits in time for the end of the week. There you are. Thank you, Aunt Maud. Mm. <laughs> Not as good as I make. I'll have to eat them all, see if they get any better. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ferryman. Nice. Please. Come away, Alf. Harry. We've still got a few places to visit if you're going to sell all those biscuits. Love these biscuits. Mm. Will you be getting any more of these biscuits? Mmm, biscuits. The end of the week came quickly. Everyone waited at the toy shop for Harry to arrive with all the money they'd raised to buy the jungle gym. Hoping they'd raised enough. Well, I can see you've all worked very hard, but I'm sorry to say that there isn't enough money here to buy the jungle gym. Mm, but we sold all the biscuits we made. Now, don't be disappointed. You should all be very proud of yourselves, working together so hard, even if there isn't enough money for the jungle gym. Well, I've got some more money. <gasps> I made this money all by myself without help from anyone. Well done, Chloe. Sorry, but huh? this still isn't enough. Aww. But I couldn't get around to sell all my chocolates. Maybe you should have worked in with the others. It's your fault we can't have the jungle gym. Humphrey, 
Sorry. At least you tried. We all tried. Very hard. Oh. You wouldn't be interested in what's left of Chloe's chocolate as the rest of the payment, would you? <gasps> Sorry, don't like chocolate. Besides, there isn't nearly enough. Aww. But if you made another batch of those tasty biscuits... <gasps> we don't have any money left to get more ingredients. Aww. Aww. Wait! Could we have a little more time, please? You can have till the end of the day. Uh, but then I'll have to sell the jungle gym to another customer. That's not very much time. We can do it. But we need Chloe's help too. My help? Will you help us get the jungle gym? Okay. Millie's plan was simple. Alf and Harry and George and Miss Blythe raced around town selling the rest of Chloe's chocolates. Working as a team, they soon sold them all and earned just enough money for Sophie and Chloe to buy ingredients for one more batch of biscuits, which Millie and Molly mixed. Jack and Poppy baked, Meg and Tom decorated, and of course, Humphrey tasted. And finally, Elizabeth packaged. Well now, those look like lovely biscuits. And there's still another hour to spare. Looks like you've bought yourselves a jungle gym. Yay! <laughs> Miss Blythe, our customers want to know, when's the next delivery of those tasty biscuits? I'm afraid you'll have to make your own from now on. This is a school, not a biscuit factory. But, but we don't have the recipe. Well, you'll have to ask Aunt Maud. Uh, <gasps> Aunt oh. Maud? What's wrong? Well, it's just that, well, she can be a bit, um, snippy. Well, perhaps if you all asked her together... Meanwhile, I've got my class to be looking after. Oh, uh, no. Miss Blythe decided she deserved the very last biscuit. While everyone else enjoyed the jungle gym, they had all worked so hard to get. <laughs> Molly loves her home and her dolly, but Molly really loves her pet, Tomcat. What are you doing, Tomcat? Despite his bad taste in gifts. Ah! Ew, a dead mouse! Tomcat! Dad! Ah! Tomcat! And Millie really loves her pet, Marmalade, too. Despite the tricks that naughty cat gets up to... Hello, Marmalade. You haven't seen my other shoe, have you? It must be under here somewhere. There it is! <coughs> Marmalade! <laughs> oh, Marmalade, you're such a naughty, naughty pussycat. But not everyone loves cats as much. Millie's dad puts up with Marmalade because he knows Millie loves that cat. <sighs> Millie, can you come and get your pet out of my chair? Again? Sorry, Dad. Come on, Marmalade. You've got your own basket to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure her toys go with her. I'm back! But most of the time, Millie's able to save Marmalade from getting into too much trouble. Uh, am I near the table yet? Stop! What? Nothing. I wasn't going to trip over your cat, was I? Oh, no. <laughs> Just as well. <sighs> but one day, Millie's dad's tolerance for marmalade started to break down. Special friend for us. Are you there? Marmalade, quick, out of dad's chair. Yes, dad. Has anyone seen my other lucky sock? Have you lost it? Lucky sock? Yes, Molly. Millie's dad has a big important business meeting tomorrow. He's got to wear his lucky socks. <laughs> Doesn't your dad have lucky socks? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I do. I was wearing them when I met Millie's mum. And I was wearing them when Millie was born. Good things happen when I wear my lucky socks. 
course, I wasn't wearing my lucky socks when we picked out Marmalade. Marmalade, get off Dad's chair. So for my big meeting tomorrow, I'll need my best shirt, my nicest trousers and both my lucky socks. Can I iron a shirt? I'll help. All right. And I've just remembered where that sock might be. Hmm. Nope. Nah. No. Nada. Nix. Nine. Nothing. Aha. <laughs> 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 Marmalade! Ah! No! No. Every coloured sock except blue. Just keep the iron moving, otherwise you'll burn a hole in Dad's favourite pants. Then what'll he wear tomorrow? When you finish that leg, Millie, Molly can do the other. OK! Still can't find that sock. What happened to your head? That cat again. We've nearly finished ironing your best trousers for your important meeting. And we've already ironed your favourite shirt. It's over there. Oh, Marmalade! Marmalade, don't wash yourself in Dad's shirt. That cat! Don't worry. We've got time to wash and iron it again before tomorrow. Oh, OK. The pants! Your best pants! Oh, no! They're burnt! My best pants! What about my meeting? Well, there's always your second best pants. Yeah. It wasn't your fault, Millie. Marmalade's to blame. Again. <coughs> I'll definitely need my lucky socks now. Right. There'll be a hug for anyone who can find my missing lucky sock. We'll find it. Yeah, we'll help. Lots and lots. Green, red, purple, pink, brown. Any blue lucky socks? We only need one. No, not one blue lucky sock. <laughs> Any luck? Sorry, but at least we've got one lucky sock. One? That's worse than none. One lucky sock is bad luck. I have to have two lucky socks to give me good luck. Look how much bad luck I've had already today. No! No! Marmalade! This ice will keep the swelling down. Does it hurt, Dad? Only when I breathe. Well, don't worry, because we'll find that sock. We could ask everyone in town. That's a good idea, Molly. It could have blown off the line. Anyone could have it and not know who it belongs to. Or how important it is. Don't worry, Dad. We'll get your luck back before tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> so, while Millie and Molly went looking throughout the whole town, Millie's dad continued to hunt around the house for his missing lucky sock. Hmm. But without Millie around, Marmalade was going to get into more trouble. No! Marmalade! Lost a sock, eh? I have a similar problem. I think all the lost socks go to sock heaven. While Millie and Molly thought the idea of a sock heaven was funny, they were still worried that they wouldn't find that missing sock before tomorrow. Good luck! Please, Aunt Maud, they asked Aunt Maud politely to lift her skirt. No. The butcher's socks came up to his knees. No. And Farmer Hegarty's socks looked far too big and woolly. No. And Miss Blythe didn't even have socks. Well, socks make my feet itchy. Millie and Molly wondered if the lost sock could ever be found. Sorry, Dad. We asked everyone in town. The day's nearly gone. I need that sock for tomorrow. Where is it? Just take a minute to think where you put it. That sock's got to be somewhere. You're right. Just a minute or two. I need to relax. Ah! No! 
No, 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 no. Stupid cat! But you sat on her! She was sitting in my chair! That's it! Mm, come here! Marmalade, you're going outside! But... And if she causes one more problem, she's not coming back in ever! That night, Molly stayed over at Millie's house to keep her company. Since Marmalade wasn't allowed in. Poor Marmalade. She wants to come in. You heard, Dad. She is not allowed. Sorry, Marmalade. See you in the morning. While Marmalade tried to get to Millie, Millie's dad couldn't sleep. His important meeting was the next morning, and he wouldn't be able to wear his lucky socks. Why don't you go and have a warm drink? Might help you sleep. You need to be rested for your meeting. Yes, I guess so. Don't be rash. Please, Dad. That's it. The cat goes outside forever. But Marmalade was only trying to get to me. Sorry, Millie. Marmalade has used up her nine lives. But Marmalade is my pet. I'm not saying you can't have a cat, but from now on, I don't want it getting under my feet, sitting on my chair, or taking a bath on my shirts. Right. Where's your basket, Marmalade? It's going in the shed. The shed? Please, Dad, can't Mom let sleep in my bedroom? We'll close the door and... Look! <gasps> my sock! My sock! My lucky sock! <laughs> Marmalade had it all along. She must have been using it to keep warm. Don't be cross with Marmalade. Cross? <laughs> I'm not cross. I'm thrilled. I now have both my lucky socks. Does this mean that Marmalade gets the hug? She found the sock. Shh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I guess she does. Here. Good marmalade. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd see that. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, Millie's dad was ready for his big meeting. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, Dad. Fingers crossed. Thanks, everyone. But I won't need your luck. Not when I'm wearing these. <laughs> Millie was glad for her dad. She knew his important meeting would go well. But she was also glad that Marmalade wasn't in trouble anymore. At least, not for the moment. Some days, Millie and Molly liked a quiet picnic. Would you like another cup of tea, Dolly? Not every game had to be running around and noisy. Woo-hoo! Woo here I come! Yeah, look out, everyone! Yeah! Humphrey! Look at all the dirt you put in our picnic! Do you like my new bike? I just got it! It's got the loudest bell ever! Humphrey! <laughs> Now look what you've done. It's all right, Tappy Bogle. It's only Humphrey. Do you like it? It's nice, Humphrey. It's racing car red, so it goes really, really fast. And it's got big tyres, so we can go on the dirt and on the moon. I'm going to show everyone. But don't ring your bell so much. It upsets all the animals. You mean like this? Later that day, Millie and Molly decided to visit Farmer Hegarty and help him around the farm. 
But some of the animals were cute. <laughs> some of the animals were mischievous. What are you two laughing at? Huh? Hey! <laughs> And some of the animals were scary. Hurry up, Farmer Hegarty! Don't worry, Molly. Beefy won't do anything unless he gets a fly. Yeah! Huh? Yeah, I'm the king of the country! Whoops! Time to go! Nearly got me. That was lucky. I don't like Beefy. I hate him. Now, Molly, it's all right. Don't hate Beefy. He's just a big old bull who gets cranky when things upset him. But he tried to get you. <laughs> he's been trying for years. I'm still here. I know what he's like. I know I can't trust him, so everything is fine now. Can we go somewhere else? Sure. In fact, I've a couple of special animals you haven't met before. How does that sound? Yes, please. Come on, Molly. All right. Up you come. See those two horses? That's Salt and Pepper. Can you guess how they got their names? That's what they look like. One's light, like salt, and the other one is dark. Like Pepper. Right. Like Millie and me. <laughs> I'm Salt. I'm Pepper. And those horses are the best of friends, too. <laughs> Shall we go and meet them? Yes, please. We thank you very much. There's nothing to be afraid of, Molly. These lovely beasts aren't like Beefy. They're gentle and trustworthy. But they're big. <laughs> so am I. You're not afraid of me, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. All right, then. Hello, Horsey. Hello. I'm Millie. Steady I'm... on, Millie. They have to learn to trust you. Molly? Don't worry. They're more frightened of you than you are of them. Really? Sure. Once they get to know you and understand you want to be their friends, well, they'll be your friends for life. Come on. Come and stand with Millie. Just stay here a moment. <laughs> oh, look at them! <laughs> Come over and meet them, but slowly, so you don't frighten them away again. Come on, Molly. I'll watch from over here. Come on! Nothing to worry about, only never walk behind a horse. Always let them know where you are. Don't get too close to their feet because they can tread on you accidentally. Can we go now? Sure. Enough for today. Over the next few visits, Millie and Molly learned how to earn the trust of the horses. Now make sure you hold the apple with a flat hand. You don't want old salt to nibble your thumb by accident. <laughs> now give him another bit of apple. Now pat him and say something quietly to him. Good boy, Sol. You like apple, don't you? Yes. Don't be afraid. Make him go away. He just wants an apple too. Open your hand flat like Millie did. Pat him. Good horsey. Should I give him another apple? I think you'd be making a friend if you do. Good horsey. Good pepper. You like apple, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it only took a couple of visits before Millie and even Molly trusted Salt and Pepper enough to get up on their backs. See? Now they trust you, you can trust them. I'm going to run! No, you won't. Just grab this bit of mane and hang on tight, but don't let go of the reins. See, there's nothing to be afraid of. A few days later, they were even riding by themselves. This is fun. Can we take them onto the road? We don't have to. Of course you can. No cars around here. 
Take him for a ride up over that hill, but don't take him too close to the freeway. Noises like trucks and cars can frighten horses. We could just stay here. Oh, come on, Molly. It'll be fine. Just remember, salt and pepper will clip-clop out, but they'll always clippity-clop home. It's the clippity that'll bounce you off. Hang on tightly coming home and keep them away from loud noises. We will. Have fun. I'll wait here and mend this fence. Even though Farmer Hegarty trusted Salt and Pepper, Molly still wasn't sure as they clip-clopped along. We won't go too far, will we? No, not too far. Millie, Molly, Millie, Molly! Don't shout! You'll frighten the horses! Soon Jack and Harry were riding on Salt and Pepper too, and the old horses didn't seem to mind. And Salt and Pepper didn't seem to mind when Meg and Sophie got on. And even when Tom and George jumped on too, Salt and Pepper still didn't mind. Just don't make any sudden loud noises, all right? Okay, yeah, yeah whatever. whatever. That's Humphrey again. Woo! Yeah, ride like the wind. Just as well he didn't come this way. He might have frightened the horses. Oh look, apples. Salt and Pepper love apples. Let's go in. Yeah! Shh! Not so loud. Bang! There must be ten billion trillion ants. How many are there in the whole entire world? You like apples, don't you, boy? Yes, apples are tasty. Now, Peppa, I want you to promise that you won't go home too quickly. And don't get frightened by anything, okay? Hey, I can see the train track from here. A train? A train. I like trains. Like Wait here. Like we train. can count how many carriages there are when the train comes. That sounds like a good idea, Molly. No. No, we have to go. The train's noisy and what if it toots its horn? It might frighten salt and pepper. I think we can trust them now. But even Farmer Hegarty said about the noise. So everyone got back on the horses and clip-clopped a little further to where Farmer Hegarty had said was as far as they could go. We should go back now. We could go a little bit further. Yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. No, look! Farmer Hegarty said we mustn't go near the freeway. Oh. We've had a nice ride, but everyone, hang on, because Salt and Pepper go faster going home. Sure enough, the horses did go back faster, like Farmer Hegarty said, clippity-clop, not just clip-clop. Hey! <laughs> I'm slipping! Hold on to me tighter! Everyone held on tight, but Salt and Pepper didn't go so fast that anyone fell off. Soon, Tom and George got off. Then, Meg and Sophie. And soon after Tom and George had jumped off, Millie and Molly were nearly back to the safety of Salt and Pepper's paddock. We're back, Farmer Hegarty. Right all. And we didn't take them anywhere near a loud noise. We had a good time. Yeah, we had a really good time. Salt and Pepper let lots of our friends have a ride too. See, those two are very trustworthy. Huh? weren't frightened by the noise. Of course not. Salt and Pepper made sure you were all right. Ah! Hey, help! Get me out of here! Help! Oh. You'll be all right, Humphrey. My lovely bike's broken. I'll never get another one. It was the best ever. You can always come horse riding with us. Really? Would it... Are they safe? Oh, yes. Salt and Pepper are very trustworthy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you all laughing about? It's so funny. Come on, tell me. <laughs> Billy and Molly were hurrying to get back to Millie's place. They had an exciting week planned. <laughs> well, fiddle.
little sticks. What's the meaning of all this rushing? Sorry, I'm your horse. You could knock someone down running along the footpath like that. We're in a hurry. I can see that. We can't be late. We're being picked up from Millie's place. Biddy Bid's going to take us on the holiday huh? to her place. Huh, Biddy Bid? She's nice. There's nothing nice about her. But she's got a garden like you, Aunt Maud. Her garden is nothing like mine. It's an unruly jungle. Yeah! We can have adventures there. And it's got secret places that you can hide, and it's fun! Fun? Fun doesn't get your vegetables grown and food in your tummy. But she grows the best plums ever. Fit of six. <laughs> it never did any good to argue with Aunt Maud. She's not cross, we late. Boom! <laughs> gotcha! Baby! <laughs> Don't tell me I got you so easily. We weren't ready. We'll get you next time. <laughs> Fiddle faddle. You have to get up early in the morning to catch this old fruit. Sorry we're late. Oh, I forgive you. You two peaches ready to go? Yeah! It wasn't long before Millie and Molly were on their way to Biddy Bid's house. Look! Oh, tip the horn, please, Biddy Bid. Aunt Maud. Aunt Maud. Biddy Bid? Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. You're not friends with Aunt Maud, are you? Well, she's our neighbour. Why don't you like each other? Don't want to talk about it. Let's drop into the butchers. We'll grab some tucker for you two beanstalks. Uh-oh. Here comes Aunt Maud. Biddy Bid doesn't come out. Thanks. Biddy Bid, Aunt Maud. Biddy Bid, what is if it? If you're going to ask about Aunt Maud, don't. Now, Molly, have you got any riddles for me? Gardening type riddles. Um. Why did the banana go to the doctor? Why? Because it wasn't peeling well. <laughs> it was some distance out of town to get to Biddy Bid's place, and Millie and Molly soon forgot all about Aunt Maud. Can we have some plums? Please, Biddy Bid. Yours are the yummiest ever. Not just yet. You can have some for afternoon tea. But remember, a handful of plums will do you good, a bellyful will do you in. Let's see what we can see. For the rest of the day, Biddy Bid showed Millie and Molly the secrets of her garden. These flowers are princess gloves. <laughs> now, aren't you grand? Let's see what's hidden in this periwinkle. Can you see the fairy paintbrush? Oh, my kid. Millie! Molly! Millie! Say! <laughs> Oh, you pair of potatoes, you got me back. <laughs> Come here. Uh, he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. Oh, dear. He loves me not. Do you have a boyfriend, Biddy Bid? Oh, no. It's just a game. Millie's got a boyfriend. Do not. I think you love Humphrey. <laughs> Humphrey? No way, not ever. Not funny, Molly. Oh, but Millie. Sorry, Millie. I was only playing. That's okay. I forgive you. Mm. Very nice pumpkins. Oh, oh. Now you have to forgive me. It's time for a nap. That's all right. Aunt Maud likes naps too. Do we have to mention her? Did you ever like Aunt Maud, Biddy Biz? Oh. A long time ago. In fact, we used to be two peas in a pod, just like you two. Best of friends all the way through school, even as grown-ups. What happened? She did something I can never forgive. What? Not important. Well, Millie and I are going to be friends forever and ever. Even if you <laughs> do say I love Humphrey. <laughs> 
Well, you two petals go off and have some plums. Don't forget, a handful of plums will do you good, a bellyful will do you in. So Millie and Molly ran off to eat some plums, little knowing what the next day would bring. Wonder what the plums would taste like. like plums, silly. <laughs> when everyone awoke the next morning, there was a problem. Spots! Now what did I say? A handful of plums will do you good, a bellyful will do you in. But, Betty Bid... This is exactly what happened with Aunt Maud. I gave her important advice and she ignored it. Oh, we didn't. I'll ring Dr. Smiley to take a look at a pair of silly gooseberries. Well, Doctor? They're both running a fever. Too many plums. Never seen too many plums produce a fever. We only had a handful. We didn't have a belly full. I think it's the measles. Measles? In fact, I prescribe plums and lots of rest. Plums help fight measles because they contain vitamin A. You mean... Oh, dear. I've accused these two little cherries of... Can you forgive me? Of course. We're always going to forgive everyone. We wouldn't want to end up like you and Aunt Maud. Mm. Uh, no. Quite right. Hello? I'm on my way, Aunt Maud. Uh, no, I won't dawdle, Aunt Maud. Uh, yes, I know you don't like doctors, but... Well... But... Yes, I'm coming right away. Seems Aunt Maud has the measles too. Unusual these days, the measles. She probably gave them to you, Millie and Molly. Not on purpose, of course. Aunt Maud's got the measles? Yes, yeah, she's pretty sick with them too. They can be dangerous when you're not young like these two. <coughs> Dr. Smiley! <coughs> yes, Aunt Maud, I'm leaving now. Can we have some more plums now, please, Bitty Bid? Bitty Bid? Sorry, Millie, Molly. More plums, is it? Yes, please. It only took Millie and Molly a few days before they were well enough to go out again. We're ready, Biddy Bid. Coming. Thanks to all the plums and the extra special care Biddy Bid had given them, they were ready to go for a drive. But in town, poor Aunt Maud was still suffering from the measles. Well... Your temperature's down, but you still need to rest. Fiddlesticks! We stopped in front of Aunt Maud's house. That's right. We're going to pay her a visit. There we are. Something for you. What's this? I heard you were sick. Plums are good for measles. I don't like plums. They bring back bad memories. You of all people should know that. Aunt Maud, I've come to forgive you. Fiddlesticks! I don't want to be forgiven. I haven't done anything to be forgiven for. Fiddle Faddle, you refuse to take my advice. You stop talking to me. I should have to forgive you. What advice did you ever give me? Gardening advice. What gardening advice could you possibly give me? I am the best gardener in the whole town. Except for plums. Plums are my speciality. Thirty years ago, I advised you to use organics, not chemicals, when growing plums. You just laughed. I've never laughed at anything in my whole life. Now, ladies, be quiet. Sorry. Well, I remember a time when you laughed, when we were friends. You laughed a lot. So did I. Well, that was a long time ago. Don't be an old cabbage. I'm trying to make up for all the time we've wasted. What's brought all this on? Millie and Molly. We were friends once, like they are now. Only they know how to stay friends. They make a mistake. They forgive each other. You and I were just... Well, just... Too stubborn. Millie, bring me those two pictures behind you. Quickly now. These ones? Yes, yes, those ones. See this picture? It's me, 30 years ago, winning best plums in the whole town using organics, not chemicals. You mean you did take my advice? Of course. I'm not stupid. Plums were your speciality. But you don't have a plum tree anymore. When you stop talking to me, I stop growing plums. Never grown one since. I'm a complete turnip. 
I'm, I must have misunderstood. Can you forgive me? Hmm. Well? Perhaps you can help me plant a new plum tree. I might have forgotten how. I'll be back as soon as you're well enough. What's the other picture, Aunt Maud? <laughs> That's Biddy Bid and me. When we were your age. Huh, they're just like us.